The man was defeated in the fight and lay on the ground exhausted. He said he was going to die soon. The four creatures he had lost to were sneering at him. The man called him by the name of Rick and said that he had done a good job the last two years. The dragon told him that yes, perhaps he is the only person in the world who is able to withstand such training. Another one told him that with this, he could not worry about the rank exam. And the last person told him that Rick had better worry about destroying everyone there. Rick said he still has a lot to learn from them. Rick showed up for the exam to promote adventurers to the E rank. He approached the girl, who told him to show her his guild registration card. But then she looked at him and recognized him. She asked what Rick was really like. It's her, Erisa. Rick recognized her too and asked if she had really moved to the center. Erisa said she was very surprised when he suddenly disappeared. Rick said that when he heard that she was working as an adventurer, he was more, I'm surprised. Erisa said that even looking at this exam field, there's no one around her age here. Many of them are teenagers. Rick said that something as ridiculous as a 32-year-old adventurer of the rank of F this is simply unthinkable. Usually people become adventurers before the age of 20 and within two years they are promoted to the rank of E. Erisa said it was true. However, she couldn't finish as she was interrupted by a man who came up to her and asked her if she had any plans for today. Rick looked at this man and thought that there were other participants of his age here. This gives him some hope. Erisa told this man that she wasn't, because she was working now. This clearly did not please the man, and he told her not to say it. He'll make sure she has fun. The girl turned away from him and said that he was bothering her. The man was completely angry with her. He grabbed her arm and told her to shut up. Women should sit quietly, explore where they are being led. Rick couldn't just look at it, so he stepped in and told the man to stop. The man asked him what he was doing. Rick couldn't stand being around him and thought he stank of alcohol. Did he get drunk and come to take the exam? Fine. He served as a clerk for 14 years. He will be able to overcome any dangers, so he accepts this challenge. After that, he told the man that they should calm down now. But the man was clearly not going to follow his advice. He clenched his palm into a fist and was about to hit him. The man said how annoying he was, so let him die. Rick thought that no, he couldn't scream die. He's drunk, so he won't listen to him. However, it doesn't matter how slow his stroke is. If he had hit him like that two years ago, he would have been hit 92 times already. However, Rick easily dodged his punch and landed the punch himself. Rick clearly didn't expect this and thought it was a bad thing. His hand moved on its own. If this escalates into a fight and he can't take the exam, but it turned out not to be as scary as this man just lost consciousness and fell to the floor. Rick was very surprised by this and thought that was really the only reason he passed out. He just pushed him. Rick turned to the girl and asked her if everything was okay. Erisa said she was fine. He's very strong. Rick said no, because this guy was just very weak. Erisa asked, is it really true? Rick said that his kick was also quite slow and weak. The girl said that even if she didn't see it. Rick said the most important thing was, did she finish all the formalities? Erisa said yes, she would return the registration card to him. His exam number is 4242, so let him do his best. Rick took this card and wondered if it was too sinister. He looked at that man and thought that, however, this guy was so weak. As expected, this is the level of the F-rank beginners of their age. Then a girl came up to him and asked him if he had finished registering. Rick looked at Lynette and thought she was as sweet as ever. If only he were 10 years younger. Compared to Erisa, some parts are not so good. Lynette said she didn't know what he was thinking when he stared at a girl's breasts, but they should hurry to the exam site. Everyone is already going to go there. Rick said yes, they're on their way. Lynette asked him why he was making such a disgruntled face. Rick said no, because he is happy that everyone will come to support him. But these people are always haunted by failures. Everything around them becomes a problem. A group of young people passed by them. Rick sighed and said if she knew when he saw these young people that he was losing all his confidence. They all seem to be shining. He can be whatever he wants to be. What's his feeling? Lynette asked what he was talking about. When he started working as an adventurer two years ago, didn't he notice his development? She'd rather worry that when they see him, the other participants will just lose their confidence. So please let him try to restrain himself, okay? Rick said that the senpai said the same thing. It is obvious that he has become much stronger, however. He himself thought about it and thought that for the last two years he had been imprisoned in the mountains and trained. Then he became a clerk and was locked up by the whole world in the guild. And that was why he had never seen the level of the average adventurer. Rick asked her that the power level of each rank is different. They are the same as before, aren't they? Lynette said she would explain everything to him now. Rank F is still learning. Fighting even the weakest monster can be very dangerous for him. 
The E rank is officially recognized as a professional level, however, fighting a weak monster will still be difficult. Rank D is a special rank. Almost all adventurers skip it and switch to the C rank. Rank C can easily destroy a low-level monster, but there are some difficulties in front of a high-level monster. Rank B can easily destroy a high-level monster alone, and Rank A can destroy a horde of high-level monsters alone. This is a cruel format. Rick said that's how it is. If you follow what has been said, then he is quite at the level of Ranky, but he cannot imagine it just because of the conversation. Lynette interrupted him and asked him to be confident in himself. She said that he is a member of the club that is recognized as the best on the continent, or a Chalcom one. Rick said that because he was called their comrade, he needed to at least rise to the rank of E. He needs the recognition of at least one seeker, so he will do his best. Meanwhile, a guard came to Erisa. He asked them to clear the road. The girl pointed out to him that man and told us that this man. The guard asked her if she was okay. Erisa said yes. One friend saved her. The man looked at this guy and said it was just unbelievable. The exact shape of the fist. With what force did he hit him to make such an iron armor? The girl asked, what is really an iron armor? The guard said that moreover, this man was wanted. He is a former a rank knight of Triania. He asked the girl who was her friend. The girl said that two years ago he worked in the administration. She doesn't think he's capable of using magic or martial arts. He was just a middle-aged clerk. The man said that he did not know what had happened in these two years, that the clerk was able to knock down a person of a rank. Meanwhile, Rick had already changed his clothes and was ready. He asked the girl that when the body check exam was over, what would happen next? Lynette said that the assessment of the attack power, have him check the schedule. Rick picked up the piece of paper where his schedule was written. One the exam consisted of an assessment of physical condition, an assessment of attack power, a written exam and an assessment of defense power. Two the exam consisted of a simulated battle. Vic said the next test is taking place here, didn't he? A girl stood in front of the subjects and said it was a bag of mucus. This bag was filled with mucus and covered with skin. It contains absorbent properties. They should use it as if they were training magic or martial arts. They have to hit him, and then they will count their collected points based on the amount of force. The bag they will use. Rick didn't listen to what the girl said anymore, but thought that he often used it in training. Then, during training, he was told that it doesn't matter how much magic and weapons he uses, because first he needs to learn how to destroy this bag of slime. Then he'll have a body he can trust. Rick asked then that it couldn't be that it could be destroyed with just fists, right? Something that can destroy the dragon's tooth and castle walls as easily as oil. He was told that this was not true. He can destroy 200 of them with one hit. He can do it too if he beats him 50,000 times every day. He has to accept it and not run away. Now Rick thought how good it was. Because of this, he was able to hit with more force and punch through such surfaces. He wants to apologize. In this case, it is green, that is, the weakest back. Meanwhile, the girl has already called one subject. It was number 4237. This man's name is Frido. Frido stepped forward and grinned. He was obviously very proud of himself and said it was time to show off his abilities. Those who were looking at him now asked that it was Dermudo's second son, wasn't it? It is said that his magical powers are equal to rank. A magic club called Fairy Rondo paid a fortune for it. Eleven years. It's just incredible. That's who they call a young genius. Rick looked at this boy and thought, is he some kind of celebrity? After becoming old, he cannot be equal to the abilities of youth, however, this is ideal. He sees its power as an example of how much it costs him to use. Frido said that the heat corresponding to the hellfire should burn everything that exists into ashes. The sweltering heat that binds the magic of the third order. Rick, I thought that magic is of the third order at that age. It's just incredible. Even if he has abilities from the rank, he has heard that it is very difficult. Contemplating the sweltering heat, the magic takes him back to his training. Isn't it dangerous to be here? Then, during training, he was told that if he worked out one type of magic, then he would have another one. Isn't that interesting? This smoke looks like mushrooms, so they have to do it all over again. Why was he running away from her? Rick remembered it with horror and thought that he thought he was going to die. However, thanks to this, he can fend off light magic. If he couldn't, he wouldn't be here. This girl was also a genius, however, if this young genius uses the same magic, is it bad? After that, Frido used a burst of flame. A very small fireball flew out of his hand. Rick didn't expect this and thought, is he really that small? When that girl used that magic, she was 100 times stronger, right? Maybe he did it on purpose, but the compressed magical energy contains a lot of power. Was it compressed 100 times? If that's the case, then he has terrifying magical abilities, as expected from a young genius. However, the target was not harmed in any way. 
Frido said that they should excuse him because he made a mistake in controlling his magic. But everyone said with one voice that it was great. Rick didn't understand them and thought it was too weak for a genius. The man who was grading this exam said that, as expected from a young genius. And I thought he just didn't believe it. The man asked what strong magic is, right? This man is suspiciously quiet. Rick thought that the previous four people hadn't even moved this back. Is this some kind of joke? And also, was the training he went through weird? Then the girl said that number 4242 was coming now. It was Rick's number. He came forward and thought, what should he do now? They told him to restrain himself, however. He would still have to restrain his strength for this level, however. He cannot restrain himself too much or he will not pass. While Rick was on his way to the goal, everyone commented on him. Someone said he was quite old. He won't be able to pass the E-rank exam at that age. That's just terrible. They will work harder in order not to be like him. There are people in this world who can and who can't. Then the man turned to Rick and said that his profile says that he started working as a seeker. Adventures at the age of 30. It's true. Rick said it was true, however. The man interrupted him and said that many people train their magical abilities until they are 20 years old. After that they have no improvements and his use of magic is terrible. He won't say anything bad to him, but he should look for a new job as soon as possible. If he fails this exam, then let him give up. Rick looked at this man and thought he knew them. Those eyes are like he's looking at something very pathetic. To be honest, his magic level is just terrible. He started too late, so his argument is quite reasonable. Rick began to remember his training again. He was told that he was only halfway there. Should they leave it at that? Rick was already completely tired, but said he could still walk. He started too late, and he can't stop now. He thought he was thinking, isn't that normal? What age would he be to start doing something new? He took off his sweatshirt and thought that everything was fine. He's calm. He will hold back. A self-confident gentleman who looks down on everyone. If a middle-aged man has terrible magic skills, will he lose? If that's the case, then he should stop being an adventurer and look for another job. After which, he struck his blow. The impact was so powerful that it even tore down the wall. Rick said the green slime bag doesn't absorb anything. Others wouldn't break down from it. He himself thought that now he was thinking about it. He has been trained a lot these two years. The only thing he hadn't been trained in was how to hold back. Rick told Lynette that he finished ahead of everyone else and got excellent. Don't let them underestimate the former clerk. Lynette told him that he had worked there for 14 years. Frido was very unhappy about this. He glared at Rick with his displeased gaze and thought that this was a damn 40-year-old I don't understand who. He had already crossed his path twice. However, apparently, he is very prone to physical attacks, but he is defensive. The next exam will be the distribution of the defense force, so it will show him what he is capable of. Against fourth order magic, which even he couldn't block completely. The next test has already begun. Rick passed it easily. The man who took his exam said it was great. Rick thanked him. The examiner said that next, since they would raise the spell level to five, then let him allow the use of a higher level protective spell. Rick sighed and told him not to worry about him. Actually, he is ashamed to admit, but he can only use attacking and defensive magic with one spell of the first order. The examiner was very surprised by this and asked if this was really the case, despite the fact that he handles magic so deftly. Rick said no. Anyway, the next spell will be of the fifth order. Actually, the first order is not. He paused, then told the examiner that please don't let him worry, and let him be kind and not hold back and release the spell. The examiner said that if he wants to, he will do it, however, let him not regret it later, okay. After that, he began to cast his spell and said that the saints who look at the walls of the fortress and the soldiers who cling to them, let them hear the bringer of destruction, and now that the southwest storm is coming, this spell was called Cyclone Strike. Everyone else who watched this said that a fully cast spell of the fifth order. This is not something that is thrown around in the exam. At the rank of E another man said no, because it's not even something that is thrown around at higher levels. Frida was scared and said it was simply impossible. Then another man came to them and said that he would have thought that the exam should have ended a long time ago. Why are they so tense? The girl turned to him and called him Sylvester. She asked him that why did a knight of the first rank from the knight's order come here? Sylvester said he was assigned here as a senior officer in the defense unit for the exam. However, more importantly, what is the situation? The girl told him if he understood what was going on. After that, she explained everything to him. Sylvester said it was understandable. An adventurer of the F rank destroyed a green slime bubble, a wall and a barrier with his bare hands with one blow. He defended himself against a class 2 mage's 5th order spell with a 1st order spell. Is this a common joke in the guild? 
The girl told him that no, this was not a joke or an urban legend. The participant number 4242 does exist and, apparently, there is some misunderstanding. The bubble was not made of low-grade slime it was a complex object made of medium-grade blue and yellow slime. The spell that the magician cast was a fully cast fifth order spell. What he used to defend himself was an unspoken spell of the first order. Sylvester was very surprised by this and asked what it was. It's just not possible. Both, even for a first rank knight like himself, it's just not possible. Who is he? Test subject number 4242. The girl asked if he wanted to look at his registration documents. Sylvester took these documents and asked if it was really 32 years old. And at that age, he has the rank of F and such power. What kind of life did he have? After that, he looked carefully at these documents and saw the work activity. It said he was a receptionist. Sylvester rubbed his eyes and asked, What? 14 years as a clerk. Registrar, is this some kind of title for someone who defeated a dragon or something? The girl told him that she didn't. Meanwhile, Rick was talking to Lynette. Rick asked her if he really didn't have to hold back on the first exam. Lynette said that it was right when they told him to try to restrain himself. It was in relation to the second exam when his mock battle will be against another person. Rick got upset and asked what the hell he was worried about. Then a disgruntled Frido ran up to him. Rick looked at him and said that he was in the exam. A young genius. Frido said that there is no one in his name. He is Frido's chosen one. Rick said he was saddened by the lost children. Maybe they should help him find his parents. Frido told him not to laugh at him. The boy started crying and said that he was going to brilliantly show his genius in this exam. He got in his way with his dirty tricks. Rick said he was crying. No, he didn't do any dirty tricks. Then a girl came up to her and told Rick that he had the guts to make her little brother cry. Rick asked what was wrong, so she was his older sister, right? Frido rushed to his sister Angelica. He said that yes, she is the first daughter of the house of Dermudo. He hugged his sister and started crying again. He told her that this 40-year-old man was bullying him. Rick got angry and said he was still about 30. Angelica said that now she is for her younger brother Frido to this 40-year-old. Rick said he was only about 30 years old, and he wasn't mocking him at all. Angelica shouted at him to shut up. Her sweet Frido said so, which means that, of course, a 40-year-old man like him is a villain. Rick said he said he was about 30. Angelica said she was officially challenging him to a duel. Then she took off her glove and threw it at him. Rick picked up the glove and said it was washed white. A noble girl like her probably wouldn't understand. But an old man is terrible, does she know? Lynette asked that picking up this glove meant agreeing to a duel, right? Rick looked at the glove in his hands in horror. Angelica, pleased, said that he had picked her up. In a duel in the style of the Kingdom of Philgame, both sides can set one condition. She said that her condition was that the loser must serve the winner until death. She is a knight of the second rank of the royal order, she will give him what he deserves. After some time, they came to this duel. Angelica kept grinning and said she would teach him a good lesson. Rick said it's starting to get pretty annoying. He just wanted to focus on the exam. This girl is a knight of the second rank of the royal order, right? That's quite a lot, right? Lynette said that the knightly order of the kingdom is leading the defense of peace in the kingdom of Philheim. Only knights of rank 1 are above rank 2. Moreover, there is one more legendary knight rank, which only 13 people have reached. This title is called a knight of special rank. He is not directly related to the hierarchy of knights. Rick asked that a knight of the second rank is like a rank in adventurers, right? Then there's nothing to worry about. Lynette said no, she was very strong. So let him try to restrain himself. Rick looked at her in surprise and asked her what to hold back. But she's much stronger. He had just become an adventurer of the rank of F. Lynette asked if something was bothering him. Rick said he was worried that he would be able to survive and return home. Lynette told him that she really asked him to remember the training he had gone through over the past two years. Rick smiled and asked what those last two years were like, right? Then he grabbed his head and told her to save him. Lynette asked how he was feeling. Rick said it was like his spirit was broken. Lynette said he wasn't worried anymore, was he? Rick thought that was for sure. Didn't he impress everyone with his strength in the exam? He became really powerful. After that, he got up and said that he would take a walk for a while. Lynette told him to take care of himself. Angelica asked him if he had finished his preparations. Rick concentrated and thought that his opponent was a rank 2 knight, and he did not know the limits of his abilities, so he would do whatever he could. Angelica said his expression had changed, although he still has the rank of F so she would hold back at least so that he wouldn't die. Rick watched her movements carefully and thought that she was a swordsman who chose the magic of strengthening, strengthening her body and weapons, right? Angelica said she wondered how he would cope with her speed, because she was already walking, after which she applied her skill called Instant Step. 
In the blink of an eye, the girl was already behind him. Angelica said it was just a greeting. She slowed him down a bit, but for him of rank F, it's probably still too fast. Frida watched from the sidelines and laughed. He asked Rick if he had ever seen such a thing. And again he called him a 40-year-old peasant. Rick said he still calls him that. Frido said his older sister is known as Angelica, the lightning flash. She is famous for her insane speed. Angelica laughed too and said he looked shocked, so he couldn't even get a word out. However, next time she won't intentionally miss. Then she used the jerk again. Rick thought that's what he thought. It's too slow. A flash of lightning, right. It's much slower than when he's just running, right. Lynette called out to him. Rick came to his senses and thought that he needed to dodge. Then he took a step to the side, and Angelica flew past him. Angelica did not expect this and thought that he had really returned. Moreover, now he seemed to see all her movements perfectly. But it just can't be. Only a few class 1 knights can react to her speed. And this 40-year-old had not had time to react to her movements before. After which she said that it was just a lucky coincidence, he moved and thus dodged. However, this will not happen again. She used her lunge again, however, she tripped over a rock that was lying right in her path. Rick thought that's what he thought. This is very slow, is this really a rank 2 knight? Did she use her connections to get into the order or something? Or did he just become so strong? As if, but now he needs to dodge. He raised his head up and saw Angelica flying straight at him like a whirlwind, but the girl herself was no longer in control. Rick was also surprised, thinking that she had really spun in order to carry out a series of chaotic hacking attacks. His elders taught him various martial arts, but he sees such a technique one time. Will he be able to come back from everyone? However, he succeeded. He was shocked by this himself and thought that was he really strong. How self-confident. Even if he was strong, then it was by the standards of rank F there's always someone stronger. And in the end, he's just a beginner. This move was beautiful and moreover her tactics are quite cunning. She deliberately used only a fraction of the speed of the jerk and as soon as he relaxes, she carries a fatal blow. This is the power of a rank 2 knight. Angelica herself thought that she tripped over a stone at a crazy speed, but it seems that the 40-year-old did not notice it. So she's going to keep cheating on him. She told him that this reception had just... He responded to her attack. The last time her movements were seen, it was so clear during a fight with a knight of special rank. However, if he can see them, then all she has to do is move so fast that he can't. So let him prepare from now on. She will use a super fast technique that can only be used three times a day. The load on her body is very high, and it is an order of magnitude higher than the speed he has seen so far. Rick watched her movements carefully and thought that she was three times faster than before. However, as he thought, it is very slow. Was she serious? But he can't relax. He should not relax, because this is also a trap. But the question kept popping up in my head, is she really serious? And Rick kept telling himself that he didn't need to relax. He decided to observe her movements one more time, and then the next time she charged, he would meet her with one critical attack. So he dodged her tug again. Angelica was already starting to lose her stamina and thought that it just couldn't be. Was he able to come back this time too? Who is this guy? Is he definitely an F rank? She can only apply Rin two more times. She shouted at him that, as she thought, he had dodged. However, the girl felt severe pain in her body, but she was not going to give up and use her willpower. Rick was ready for her blow and thought he was still on guard. This jerk is also deceptive. When she moves on to a deadly attack, will he strike? But then Angelica stumbled over a rock on the road again. Rick tensed and thought, is she really disappearing? There is no bottom, and she anticipated his attack. He was preparing to strike forward. If he put it down now, would he make it in time? After which, he hit the ground with his fist. The ground in this area shuddered and cracked. However, Angelica was not hurt, as she was out of reach. However, she was very scared and thought that if she hadn't tripped over this stone, then this blow would have been hers. Rick looked at the girl and said that as he thought, she dodged him. What did you expect from a rank 2 knight? Angelica asked him that who was he anyway. Rick said he just turned over another page two years ago. And from the registrars of the guild, he became a novice adventurer of the rank of F. Angelica didn't believe him and thought it was a blatant lie. Rick said that he was told to restrain his strength when he fights with other people. However, he knows that no, well, to deprive himself of freedom of action with someone of high rank like her. He will take this chance to train with an experienced opponent, so he will give his best. However, Angelica told him that she was giving up. Rick was very surprised by this and thought that why, after all, she was beating him. Angelica could barely hold back tears and said that this time she would admit defeat. Rick asked why. However, the girl ignored his questions and already rushed to her brother. Rick said that now that he thought about it, what about their deal? 
Before the duel, Angelica seriously told him that her condition was that the loser would be obliged to serve the winner until death. Rick told her that he hadn't mentioned his condition, but at least she had fulfilled hers, right. Angelica said that one more time. She reached her limits and applied an instant jerk. Rick said it was her fastest dash of the day. What the hell is this? Did she suddenly feel sick? After that, he returned to the waiting room with Lynette. He looked depressed and asked if he had passed one exams. Lynette said that if he did it, then it's good. And if he failed, they would simply triple the amount of his training. Any result will benefit him. Rick said it would definitely kill him. Then someone turned to Lynette and called her a beautiful dark elf. Lynette looked at this man, who told her that he wanted to ask her something. Does she have a minute? Lynette stood up and said that after that she needed to. However, the man interrupted her and said that he had forgotten to introduce himself. His name comes from a family that rules the noble people of the northern region. Rick thought it was so long. It comes from a family that, he'll just call it Hale. The man said he was asking to be allowed to find out her name. Lynette calmly told him her name. The man sighed and said that even her name was beautiful. In fact, he dropped something valuable earlier. Was she interested in what he had dropped? Lynette said no. The grad asked if it was really true. Is she interested? Then he would tell her. He dropped his feeling of love in the depths of her eyes. Rick thought, what's wrong with this guy? Grad touched her hand and said that when this exam was over, he would like her to go north with him. He wants her to become his second wife. Rick looked at Lynette's expression and realized that she was very upset that he had touched her. Then he stood between them and addressed this man. He said it was his girlfriend, so he wouldn't be silent when some guy touched her. Rick himself thought it was ugly. She will probably be angry at this lie, but let her put up with it. The man looked at him with displeasure and asked, Is this really a boring typical middle-aged man? Rick showed him his admission to the exam. The man asked him if he was really a test subject for this promotion exam. Rick wanted to say something to him, but the man laughed out loud and said that it couldn't be that he had an F rank at that age. He's just joking. Rick said he could say that, but he reached it himself at 24 or 25, right? The man grinned and said no. His rank is A. He received the rank of E when he was 14 years old, and he is an examiner for the training battles of the second exam. Rick tensed up and thought, is this really serious? The examiner said okay, it doesn't matter. He turned back to Lynette and asked her why she didn't put this dullness in the past and have dinner with him. Lynette said that's exactly what he said. She took Rick's arm and said that she was dating this man, so she couldn't accept his invitation. And moreover, the smell of his perfume is so strong that it becomes unpleasant. Rick said that, and he thought, what does it stink of? Is that his smell, then? The examiner got very angry and said that a three-year-old man like him was not suitable for a first-class beauty like her. On the second exam, if he leads his group, then let him prepare. He would open her eyes and let her realize how incommensurable their positions were. After that, the man just left. Rick sighed and said that everything had turned into a problem again. He really hopes that this guy won't be the senior of his group. Then Lynette told him that the numbers of those who passed were posted there. Rick came over and was very happy when he saw his number there. He grabbed the girl by the shoulders and said that he could. He's there. Lynette said she was congratulating him. After that, he let her go and said he was to blame. He apologized to her for what happened. Rick said that when he suddenly started acting like his girlfriend to her, pretending to be the girlfriend of an old man like him must have been unpleasant. Lynette smiled and said no. On the contrary, she was happy. Well, then she would go and inform the team about it. Meanwhile, that examiner returned to the room and began to get very angry. He looked at the furniture around him and said it was so annoying. This jerk is worse than a third-rate one. People are born with a rank. If this nameless fly comes across him in the washroom, then he. Then Angelica ran up to him and began to cry. On the other hand, Fredo came up to him and started crying too. Their brother was very surprised and asked the younger ones what had already happened. Fredo said that earlier in the first exam, when he was trying to show off his genius, this 40-year-old used dirty tricks in order to prevent him. Angelica said that she did too. This 40-year-old took advantage of the conditions of the duel. He probably wanted to try to get the better of her. Their older brother got very angry and said it was just not forgivable. He asked what kind of an unworthy man he was. Angelica said that the average age is about 40 years old. It seems that he worked in the town hall or something. The examiner immediately remembered Rick and asked his younger brother if he remembered what this person's number was on the exam. Meanwhile, Rick was already on his way to the exam. He was very nervous and said that finally the problem of a human opponent in a mock battle. Will he be able to hold back? If he restrains himself, will he be able to win? And who is his examiner? He won't stop being nervous. Lynette told him to calm down. Lick apologized and then noticed a man approaching them. 
The man smiled at them and asked him, What, is he by any chance Rick? Rick said it was him, however, had they met before. The man said no, let it not sound rude, but he knows about it from the first side. He's happy to meet him. He's a lynx. Rick greeted him too. Lynx said that he would be the senior examiner for his second exam. Rick was very happy about this and thought that thank God it wasn't sunrise. Lynx said that he had looked through the dossiers of the people who would be led and could not believe his eyes. Changed jobs from a receptionist to an adventurer at the age of 30. He thought, oh my God, what is this? Rick thought, what's this coming to? According to this tradition, they will make fun of him because he started late. He hopes that he will not have one more reason to worry. Lynx told him what an indomitable will. As a middle-aged man, he is inspired by her. A man like him, Rick was surprised and thought that those eyes. He says this without mockery. Lynx said he actually became interesting when he was 24 years old. He thought he started late, but he got into this world six years later than even he did. Rick must have wanted something terribly badly, something like a dream that he wanted to achieve at any cost, right? Rick said that's right, he has a dream. But how did he guess? Lynx said he understood. He is already five decades old, but he also still has a dream. And in order to achieve it, he must get the A rank. He has been working on this for 20 years and has only reached rank B. However, he is not going to give up. And Rick is the same, right? I thought, is this man really the same as him? Does he have something he's passionate about? And he's here, even if it's not appropriate for his age. Rick held out his hand and said yes, he's the same. And he will be looking forward to their training battle. Lynx shook his hand and said yes. Of course, he is not looking for favorites, however, when the exam is over, how about this? Drinks. Rick laughed and said it sounded good. Lynx thought what beautiful hands, like those of a martial artist tired of fighting. He said he would have to work harder. But then someone interrupted them. It was the same examiner who had addressed Rick, calling him third rate. The examiner said that he had something to discuss with him. Is he free? Rick stood at the blackboard and watched the distribution of who got to which examiner. Examiner Luster has subjects from 410 to 4199. The examiner's links go from 420 to 4299. Rick said it was close. One less group and Hale would have become his examiner. Fine, he will not succumb to the curse of 4242. Luck is on his side. At that moment, an announcement was made saying that this announcement was for exam participants 420 to 4299. The health condition of examiner Lynx has suddenly deteriorated, and therefore he will not be able to take the exam. Rick was upset and thought, is this really serious? And this despite the fact that he looked good recently. Is he really okay? The announcement went on to say that this was why it was decided that the examiner of the previous group, or rather Luster, would also lead this group. Rick choked on this information. He thought it was a lie, right? There was a small group nearby who were also discussing it. The girl asked that Luster is the same Luster, right? The guy next to her said it was the worst. Another guy said that they probably won't pass this year. Rick turned to this group and asked, is Examiner Luster really that famous? He was told that yes. He is called the man of 1000 skills, the most powerful magician of a rank. And he is also a brilliant adventurer who got the A rank at the age of 17. He is the eldest son of the noble house of Duramuto. However, the problem is that he has one more name. Vic asked, is there really another one? He was told that his other one name sounds like the destroyer of the F rank. Every year, he only participates in E rank training battles, and he torments everyone who catches his eye. He seems to like it. He is warned, let him try not to attract his attention. Rick was scared and thought that he had caught his eye so much that he had almost devoured his name. Here the subject was carried out on a stretcher. The man was already unable to walk and said it hurt. That fucking idiot. In the rank E exam, apply such madness as a spell of the sixth order. How dirty it is. Rick was just horrified and asked what should he do. Luster, who was currently taking the exam, said that magic of the fourth order let it freeze the deep green earth. He used his magic called the stone blizzard and eliminated one more subject. Luster sighed in displeasure and said that it was not good. This is not good at all. After all, he is already rank 3 unfinished. That's just terrible. In order to defend against magic of the 4th order, he needs to possess magic and protection at least at the level of rank B. The people in the stands were also scared and said he was going to take everyone down. Luster grinned and said that let number 4242 wait. He will show him such horror that even the cauldron of hell will seem like warm water to him. Then someone addressed him. Luster didn't even turn around and asked what the elite guards were, right? What do they need? The old man asked why he didn't provide this villain number 4242 to them. Luster asked what he was talking about. He's actually going to punish him, so don't let them stand in his way. 
The old man said that it would not be such a humiliation to lose to him. The strongest at the A rank, Luster. Luster said that yes, if he thought so, then what if he was suspended from the exam? If his pride and hard work were trampled on with a simple unjustified disqualification, that would definitely be humiliating, wouldn't it? Timeliness is the first and most important thing in the exam. It would be nice to see how he tries to make it on time. So, can he leave it to him? The old man said that as he wished. Meanwhile, Rick was terrified. He couldn't calm down now. He walked around the room and asked, what should he do? Lynette calmly asked him what, why was he so excited? Rick asked her in horror, why? The examiner sharpens his teeth on him, and he is the strongest of the A-rank. How could he not worry in such a situation? Lynette still calmly told him that she really asked him to calm down. If his true strength is, Rick didn't listen to her and started shouting that it was just a curse. What has he done? He wants to go home. If he goes home, then there will be much more trading. If he fails, there will be even more of them. Was his death predestined? Someone heard his scream and addressed him, calling him a young man. But after that, this mysterious man corrected himself and told him that he was either not young. However, a shout interrupted him and said yes, young man. This young man asked him that he was a test subject, right? If something is bothering him, then why shouldn't he contact him? Rick said he was a fortune teller. This is not the best place to do it. Could he not have stood in the way of his excitement? The fortune teller told him that he was under tremendous pressure. Then how about some magic that would help him calm down? He understands why he might be suspicious of him. And as a test, will he let him do it for free now? Rick didn't hesitate to say that okay, then let him do it. The fortune teller pointed him to a chair and told him to sit there. Rick said he was fine and sat down in this chair. Lynette noticed something and was about to warn Rick about it. However, at that very moment he simply disappeared. The girl noticed a magic circle in the center of this chair and thought, is this really teleportation magic? This fortune teller took off his hood and turned out to be Frido. Frida laughed out loud and said he bought it, and he gets the prize for the best leading actor. However, Lynette did not let him finish. She grabbed him by the throat and punched a hole in the wall with his body. She sternly asked him that where had he taken Rick. Frido was going to somehow justify himself to her, but the girl apparently foresaw this and cut off his eyelashes. After that, she said that his eye would be next. Frida was very scared and said that teleportation magic is the most difficult, so even a genius like him is limited to a hundred meters. I didn't throw him far. Rick himself has already teleported to some place. He got up and, looking around, asked if this was really the courtyard in front of the arena. He wondered if he had been teleported by this fortune teller. But why? Well, it doesn't matter at all now, because he better get back as soon as possible. Then a man appeared behind him and asked if this was the guy, wasn't it? The one Luster mentioned, right. This man came up to Rick and said that he had heard that he had beaten Angelica. However, he's just an ordinary 40-year-old man, isn't he? Rick said he was 30 years old. After that, I looked at it and realized that I was completely surrounded. That old man Luster talked to recently said that they are the elite guards of the Diramuto estate. So let him forgive them, but they will bury him. Here and now, Rick thought that if they were from Durumuto, then it means that these are the guys. It turns out that this fortune teller was the most gifted one. Rick asked if their goal was to keep him from leaving, right? Even if his exam starts in half an hour. The old man said 30 minutes. He defeated Angelica, which means that he is equal in strength to rank B, however. Rick interrupted him and said no. It came out because she suddenly felt unwell. It's stupid when the rank is in. This old man said that they are a professional combat team. Anyone connected to this family doesn't give a damn about what others say. Of the 20 people gathered here, even the weakest are equal in strength to rank B among them. There are those who can even compete with the A rank, including himself. Rick drew attention to this old man's weapon, which he had already taken out and thought it was a weapon with a noble finish. Apparently, he wasn't lying about rank A Rick said he understood and he thought he was finished. This is completely impossible. It was very difficult to compete with one knight of the second class of rank B no, isn't it terrible? He was dragged away to some place that is completely unrelated to the exam and they say that they are now organizing a failure for him. And this is not some kind of joke, is it? The old man said that then they would start. But then someone came up to them and noticed Rick. This company started calling Rick by his first name, so apparently they knew each other. They asked him what he was doing there. Wasn't Lynette with him? Rick looked in that direction and said with horror that Senpai, 
the combat abilities of an adventurer by rank. Fang is still learning, which is why fighting even low-level monsters is dangerous for him. The E rank is officially recognized as skillful, but still has difficulties with low-level monsters. D rank is a special rank. Most adventurers skip it and immediately reach rank CC rank is able to easily defeat monsters of any low level but he will have to sweat against higher levels. The rank is able to easily defeat a high-level monster alone, and rank is able to easily defeat a horde of high-level monsters. S rank, monsters whose fighting abilities contradict common sense should be separated from other adventurers. Rick Senpai came. Rick looked at them in horror. The man who was the harshest said that the exam was actually about to begin. What is he doing here? Rick said he went out and took a walk. The man asked what kind of people seemed to be going to fight. This did not please the bald man, who was already ready to attack Rick. He called them names and said that if they didn't want to die, then they should just disappear, because they were busy right now. Rick grabbed this guy by the shoulder and told his senpai that these people were like friends. They were sharing their skills with each other here. The bald man looked at him and asked, what is he carrying? Senpai Rika asked what it was like when. He would not have thought that he needed it, however, if so, then maybe he would help. The bald man didn't understand what was going on here and wanted to run over them again. But Rick interrupted him and told him to be quiet. He whispered to the man that even though it was terribly hard for him to lie to them, he had to stop. He doesn't want to die, does he? He turned to the old man and said that he looked like a butler, he was their boss, right? He asks him to back off, they still have to live. The old man said that if they interfere, they will be wasted. Rick said he wasn't listening to him. Meanwhile, the bald man couldn't stand it anymore. He swung his weapon and tried to hit Senpai Rick. He told him to go to hell. Senpai Rika stood quite calmly and said that he was a swordsman who focused on strengthening magic, right? The enchantment on the strength of the hands was carried out perfectly. After which, this bald man hit him with his weapon. However, his weapon shattered into small pieces. The man said that he did not approve of the fact that he neglected to strengthen the weapon. If he fights a tough opponent, then his sword will split from hitting him. The bald guy was very surprised and thought that it was simply impossible. He was just standing there. Didn't he even use augmentation magic? However, this man was not going to give up and let his fists enter. However, Senpai grabbed that fist. The bald guy thought he couldn't even move. Senpai said that it was as he thought. The enchantment on his hands is pretty good, however, unfortunately, the balance. After which, he clenched his fist. The bald guy looked at all his broken fingers in horror. However, Zai Pai told him not to worry. If that's all, it's going to heal now. After which, he applied his healing light, and this bald guy's arm recovered in a second. The bald guy stared at his palm in surprise and thought that the wound, a simplified spell of the first order, and even instantly, the man sat down next to him and said that the strength of his hands, of course, is great, but he should devote himself to understanding all his processes and realizing them as a whole. If he does this, he will become much stronger than he is now. One of this old man's subordinates said that this orc, although he is a monster, however, he can speak and even wields magic. The old man said that this man was a rare case, a monster who has mastered the skills of an adventurer, a priest who possesses superhuman strength and intelligence and is also very experienced in support magic. The wise orc, Glowstone Ashork. The guy asked his boss that he had already heard this nickname. Who was he? The old man said that in front of them is a team that is made up exclusively of adventurers of the S rank. The strongest team on the continent is called the Copper Fist. The guy said it was something on the level of legend and fairy tales. Do they really exist? The Shork stood up and said, then who will be next? The subordinates of this old man, although they were scared, were not going to retreat. The main one told them not to retreat. He is, of course, a capable warrior, but he is only one. They must attack together. Don't let them pay attention to two children. When Rick heard this, did he tell them that he was really asking them to back off? However, ignoring these two is a wise decision. Another one of his senpai came up to Rick and said that this was it, that yes, they're not his friends. He got into trouble, and they chose to fight him, didn't they? Rick realized it was useless to lie anymore, so he said yes. The guy told him, as far as he knows him, he didn't want them to fight with Bloston, because he would feel sorry for them. He guessed right, didn't he? Rick said that's exactly what it is. So if they could peacefully, the guy interrupted him and told him not to worry because he doesn't suffer from a lack of common sense. He makes plans soberly, assessing their chances for a peaceful outcome. After that, he took out a weapon from his bag. Rick asked, what is it? The guy said he designed it the day before yesterday. Super Barrel, Model 3, version called Juliet. Inside he has a magic stone that can repeatedly emit explosion magic and 30 small lead balls. Rick asked what and what was it all about. 
The guy smiled and said that's what it was about. After that, he began to shoot all their opponents with his weapon. When he was done with it, he rather said that he was working pretty well. As expected, he's a genius. Rick clearly wasn't expecting this and told him to wait. The guy asked him what is it? Does he really want to try shooting too? It's possible. However, he's having a hard time controlling magic for her, right? Rick said not at all. If this happened when he was in control, what would have happened if he hadn't done it? The guy said that everything was fine. Besides, no one died, right? That old man's subordinate asked, what was it? Did he turn out to be more than just some kid? The old man said he was not a child. He is half elf and half dwarf. He's been looking like this for over 50 years. One can only guess what technologies he has used in the last 1000 years. He is the strongest gunsmith in this world. He is called the Millennial Master, and his name is Mizzet Eldwarf. A man appeared here, who took a little girl hostage and put a knife to her throat. He told everyone not to move. If it's a baby, dear to all of them, then everyone should lie down on the ground. Rick asked, what kind of stupidity is this? If his life is dear to him, then let him not be a fool. Bluestone told him not to be rude, so for his own good, he should let her go. Mizzet said that's for sure, who knows what might happen. That guy laughed and said that it was as he thought. If you take a small one hostage, they won't do anything, and now they're piling on them. This little girl asked Rick what this man was doing. Rick told Alice that he just wanted to play with her. Elisa said that's how it is. Okay, what does he want to play? The man told her to shut up, let her just shut up. The girl screamed that she was in pain actually. They're just a bunch of bullies. After that, Alice had activated her power. Rick said he was sorry he couldn't save them. That old man's subordinate asked, what is it? Is this magic at level 7 of the order? What is it? She didn't seem to be casting any spells at all. The old man said that she is a pure-blooded demon. At just 10 years old, she is the most powerful combat mage. She is called the Spirit of Desolation. Alice Dracul, a legendary team. Just think, that day he saw them in front of him. There was a serenity in their eyes that he had never seen before. He decided to live the rest of his life peacefully. He's retiring. Rick said it was fine. Okay. Meanwhile, Lynette was still torturing Frido and trying to find out from him where Rick was now. Frido said that it seems they have been in this position for two months. How much longer is she going to keep doing this? Lynette said Rick wasn't coming back yet. Frido said that then she could hold him like that for as long as she wanted. Why is that? Because where this guy teleported to, there were 20 elite guards of the Duramuto estate in ambush. Who knows what has become of this 40-year-old now? Rick appeared and apologized to the girl for making her wait. It's good if he just happens to be the chosen one, but he doesn't even know if he's alive. Frido looked at him in horror and said that there was not a scratch. How did he get out? Rick said how to tell him that. He is very sorry. He called for backup, so let him forgive him. Frido asked, what happened? It's just not possible. He probably used some dirty trick again. Lynette threw him up with such force that Frido smashed through the ceiling with his head and got stuck there. After that, she went up to the peak and said that she was welcome back. Rick said he was back. And what happened to this wall? Lynette said she just cracked a little bit. Rick looked at the completely broken wall in horror and thought that that humble Lynette had an S rank. So he would try never to make her angry. After that, they returned to the waiting room again. Rick looked very tense again and said he was next in line. It is very good that he managed to pass the exam. But this does not change the fact that you will have to fight with Hale. Lynette said he died pretty hard. Rick said he feels like he's throwing up right now. Then the examinee was taken out of the examination hall again. The men who were carrying him told everyone around them to step aside. I need to go to the doctor's office right now. Rick said that Hale was crazy again. Lynette said he was surprisingly very calm. Although he had shouted in the same situation before, Rick sighed and said that now it's come to this, all he can do is train his confidence. Compared to how he switched jobs for adventures, it's not that important. Lynette looked at him in surprise and asked, is it really true? The priest himself was shaking all over. He was very afraid anyway and asked her that nothing would help here, did she understand that? His opponent is the strongest of the A-ranked, a man of 1,000 skills, and he can only use one spell of the First Order for attacking and defensive magic. A person of two skills, it's 1,000 versus two, does she represent it? Lynette said that she had already told him this more than once, however, if it was about him, then such a level of the enemy was not scary. Rick said no, whatever she says is completely different. Lynette squatted down in front of him and asked if he had a little faith in himself. Rick said he started too late. 
He was always told that he would not succeed, so how could he have faith in himself? Lynette asked, then maybe everything works the other way around. Rick asked in surprise, what's the opposite, right? Lynette was told that if he says that other people's words can shake his confidence, then in the same way, other people's words can strengthen her. Or is she wrong? She believes in him. He's strong. He will pass this exam, which means he can beat this person. From the day he decided to become an adventurer, she had always believed in him. Would he believe in her? Rick thanked her for saying that. He said that if she said that, then he could feel his confidence growing. Lynette smiled at him. Then the wounded Lynx came into the room. He turned to Rick. Rick immediately jumped up and asked if he was okay. What happened? Lynx asked if he was interrupting. Luster defeated him. He didn't even strike a single blow. Rick was horrified. And I thought that this question could not be. Is he doing all this just to become his examiner, or what? Lynx said that one day he heard about his dream. Rick asked what about the dream that he could fulfill only with the rank of a right. Lynx said yes. His dream. His city is on the outskirts and in it he wants to build a school for children who want to become adventurers. He told him that a third-rate trash like him, and even a late starter, wants to build a school, or what? If they were taught by the third rate, then won't they grow up to be third rate? Old geezers like him make the world a worse place. Someone like him and get in a rank, or what? He can't handle it. He must know the limits of his body. He'd better hurry back to his village in order to retire. Let him spend the rest of his useless life there and die. Link said it was just outrageous, but he couldn't answer him. It was to be expected. It's just crazy to dream up to such a difficult climb as he is. He asks Rick to give up the exam. He would treat Rick much worse than he would him. Rick said that at least he believed in this. People have the right to start what they want and when they want. So, but then an announcement interrupted his speech. The announcement said that the test subject number 4242 let him proceed to the test arena. Rick told Lynette to take care of Lynx. Lynette said he should leave it to her. Rick was very angry at Hale. He thought that he would definitely tear it up. Lynette also entered the arena to watch Rick fight. She said that was what Bluestone and the others meant. Arisa noticed her and asked that she was with Rick, right? Lynette looked at her and said that was true, however. Arisa said she was a former employee of Rick's, and she's a maid from the same guild as Rick, right? Lynette said yes, and introduced herself. Arisa said she was glad to meet you. She had never seen Rick in the role of an adventurer before, and so she came to watch his training fight. Lynette said that's how it is. Does she want to watch it together? She was also going to watch with some of her guild friends. Lysa noticed her and shouted for her to come here. Lynette said she was there. Bluestone said that the seat next to it is vacant, so she can eat here. They noticed a girl next to her and asked who it was. Lynette said that this is Rick's former employee, whose name is Arisa. Arisa said it was nice to meet you. Mizzet immediately drew attention to her breasts and said that she was free next to him, so she could sit down. Bluestone told her that he would molest her, so let her sit down here. After that, he turned to Lynette and asked how their non-young newcomer was doing. Lynette said he was fine. He will easily pass the second exam. Elisa said that everyone is already here. Where is Rick's teacher? Lynette said yes, exactly. Bluestone said that the adventurer's strength is directly related to the great four foundations. Physical strength, body control, magic control, and magic reserve. Each of them must train a stock of magic until they reach the age of 20. After that, you cannot expect significant growth. Arisa asked that. However, Rick became an adventurer when he was 30 years old, right? Bluestone said it was. His stock of magic is not great. And that's why he trained the other three bases hard. He raised his physical strength from zero to the level where he can defeat the most dangerous monster with only his bare hands. To control magic, this guy who finds everything boring, Mizzet, has been constantly teaching him for two years. Mizzet said no. Even if that's the case, he still can't use defensive magic. Alice said that Alice was just playing with Rick using magic. Mizzet said that if he had missed his training session, they would only have brought the ashes here, and he trained with Lynette to control his body. Arisa was surprised by this and said that she thought she was an ordinary maid, but she was so strong. Mizzet said Rick was desperately absorbing it all. He has already joined the ranks that carry the S rank like all of them. No, if he accepts this innate skill, which he is not allowed to use yet, then one day he will be able to defeat even them. Arisa said that's how it is. Lynette said that even though it seems that he himself does not suspect it, her entire team looked at her questioningly. Bluestone asked what was all this about. Mizzet asked, is that really not all? Lynette said that before he started his studies, he said that his strength lay in his modesty. And that's why he hid how strong he was getting, right? Littlefinger asked what was wrong with her. In his heart, Rick believes that he is only at the rank of F but will he be able to cope? 
This examiner, Rick was already out on the field, where Hale was waiting for him. Hale grinned and said it couldn't be. He is surprised that he escaped from the guards and came here. However, they were just insignificant people who managed to get close to him. Let him do himself a favor and not make the mistake of comparing him to them. Rick thought he understood that. By one look at it, however, he said he would let me ask him something. Why did he become an adventurer? Hale looked away and said it was because he had talent. And so he began to get tired of it. He was thinking about choosing the right moment to leave. Rick said that's how it is. Then he doesn't want to lose to him. Hale chuckled and said that he should be more polite when talking to the teacher. He doesn't know how much longer he's going to chat, but maybe they'll start already. He looked at Rick and asked him what he was doing. Was he nervous? Rick thought that he couldn't let anger control him. He needs to calm down. To begin with, as Lynette had taught him, Lynette then told him that one last piece of advice. One minute after the start, he should stand still and just focus on his opponent. Rick thought that, to be honest, he was a little nervous, but he believed Lynette. Hale said that if he didn't attack, then he would start. He used his magic of the third order called destruction by fire. Rick thought that this was not the spoken version used by that gifted one. It is not pronounced, but it is not at all of the same level as that of a gifted person. However, he is just watching. After that, there was a huge explosion. Arisa was so scared for him that she even jumped up from her seat. However, Rick was unharmed. Hale said it was fine. To get that and resist, and he's pretty tough, right? The next one will hurt more, okay. After that, he used his magic of the fourth order called Cutting Tornado. Hale grinned again and said he looked like he was made of solid rock. In that case, he should push on. Both he and that old teacher. They are third-rate latecomers who refuse to see reality and the elite like him can wipe themselves. Arisa turned to Rick's team and told them to look at what happened to him. But they're all not even worried, are they? Hale said it was pointless stubbornness. It pisses him off. He will finish it with his own hands. After that, he used his stone fist and an instant jerk. However, Rick was able to repel this attack and did not even budge. Arisa was very surprised by this. Hale was very surprised by this himself. Rick thought he finally understood what Lynette was telling him. He was so busy with his innate gift that he neglected to develop and polish it. And of the great four foundations, apart from the innate large magical reserve, everything is in disarray. Against an opponent of this magnitude, he cannot lose. Frido and Angelica shouted at their brother to hit him. Hale told Rick that they had blocked each other by accident. Don't let him get too cocky. After that, he used his spell and said that with the heat of the underworld, the fires of the earth, and the sacred flame of heaven, let everything turn to ashes. Magic of the third order called fire suppression. But Rick easily stopped this attack as well. Angelica and Frido were very surprised and asked what was going on. Rick said it was so crudely crafted magic. It doesn't even require magic to defend itself. If you weave a particle of magical energy very precisely, then even one ten thousandth of the magical reserve will be enough to fight back. Hull said that just because this coincidence happened again, you shouldn't get too cocky. There won't be three times. And then he applied his instant jerk. Rick said it was slow. He was laughing his palm into a fist and was about to punch him in the face. Hale noticed this in time and used a steel body, trying to protect himself. Angelica said it was simply impossible. My brother used amplification magic, and this 40-year-old who didn't use it. Hale said it was understandable. Apparently, he somehow gained more strength than usual for the E-rank. He'll deal with him. Rick looked at him questioningly. Hale said that he had already taken more exams than he was going to, so it was to be expected that he would get a little tired. And besides, it is given to him that these lucky coincidences are on his side. He's worse than third rate, and apparently his only strength is luck. Rick said that no matter how much he wanted to humiliate him, what he used was not magic, but body control. However, with a level of accuracy higher than the level of his enhancement magic, Hale said he would ask then, if his words are not empty bravado, then at his age in just two years, what did he do to become so strong? Rick said that he was not allowed to leave the dragon's lair until he defeated him. He also swam in the liquid from the monster trap until he drowned. And they also attached a ton of cargo to it and threw it into the territory of the monster in order for it to run a hundred kilometers. Arisa, who I heard all this, asked if he shouldn't have died many times already. Bluestone said he was dying. However, if you managed to do it immediately after death, then he simply returned it with his healing. Arisa was horrified and thought, what kind of horror is this? Hole decided to be sarcastic again and said that he did not qualify for the ability to lie. In order to withstand such severe trials, what should have motivated him? Rick tried hard not to pay attention to his rude and vile words. He held himself confidently with his head held high and did not even think to look away. 
He looked sternly at the grinning Hale, who was still confident of his victory and said that, like the lynx he had injured, the dream supported him. Hale chuckled and asked, what kind of dream is this? Rick said that the winner is the strongest monster in this world. Kaiser Erisipiado. Fredo laughed. His older brother Hale also laughed. He asked Rick if he was serious. It's from a fairy tale called The Legend of the Hero Yamoda. Usually kids dream about this, does he know? Rick said if that's what he thinks, that these are fairy tales, then fine. It doesn't concern him. Hale said it was true. He can't stand his bullshit anymore, so it's time to get it over with. He used her seventh order magic called Forest Rope. Rick was tied up and couldn't move. He asked that the spell was not cast of the seventh order right. Very skillfully, Hale sat down and said he was surprised early. Let him let you show him his real talent. He will make it so that he can no longer boast. He started doing magic again. He turned to the forests, which tremble in fear and which are tearing down trees. A great tree of sorrow and a sad but brave sprout. Let all nature bow to the eternal variability of the world. Rick froze and said that this prayer. Hale said that. Now let him watch carefully. To the strongest at the O rank. This is him, a man of 1000 skills. The most powerful magic. The crown of human possibilities. Ate the order. And spoken in full. A huge monster appeared in front of Rick. Arisa was scared and said that the spell was of the 8th order in the E-rank exam. They're just joking, aren't they? She sees the 8th order one time. Wouldn't it be better for them to run? Unlike them, Hale's brother and sister were very happy about it. Frido jumped up from his seat and said that here he was. Big Brother's signature move. Hale grinned and asked him what he was going to do with his magic, which was not even worthy of a beginner. Rick frowned and said he would punch whoever stood in his way. Hull asked if they were returning to his bravado out of desperation again. If he wants to retreat, now is the time. He hears it, doesn't he? Rick asked what to turn on, but training is right. How many times had he used this magic? Hale said he should let him remember it. That's for sure. He has already used it several times and mastered it well. Rick said that in these two years he has fought off this magic 100 million times. Arisa asked that really a 100 million times. Frido said that this was a blatant bluff. No one will believe his lies. He's just a stupid 40-year-old jerk. Erisa couldn't stop being surprised by what she heard and saw. She asked that a hundred million times in two years, is it physically possible? Bluestone had been staring at Rick's fight the whole time. He calmly and calmly, as if there was nothing unusual in this, said that if you resort to a special magic of space-time, then it is possible. Rick really managed to stand it all. Hale said that was enough. He was bored with his bluff. And now, just like with the other old man, he will smash the dreams that he does not want to give up. He once again used the magic of you of the Eighth Order called the Divine Blow of Yggdrasil. Rick used his airstrike. Hale said he should just disappear now. However, Rick turned out to be much stronger than him. He used his power to destroy this monster and threw Hale right at his younger brother and sister. Hale was already unconscious from such a strong blow, so he could no longer continue this mocking exam. Rick did not doubt his victory at all, because he did not want victory for himself, he wanted to avenge Lynx, and he did it. He also looked sternly in the direction where Hale flew off and asked him what happened. Are his dreams still intact? Rick emerged victorious. Everyone was looking at him and saying that here he was. This can't be happening. To think that he beat Luster on the exam, on Paradise. But he looks like an ordinary guy. He's really impressive. To release such power with just a First Order spell. To be honest, they used to laugh at those who have the F rank at that age, but he's cool. Rick, I thought that's how it is. Everyone is talking about him. It's a very strange feeling. Then he saw his team in front of him. Bluestone said he did a good job. It was a good battle. The attack was great. Alice congratulated him. Mizzet said no. They're in too much of a hurry because the results haven't been announced yet. Rick said that he had really become quite strong. However, why hadn't he realized it all this time? The four of them trained him for two years, and he couldn't help but become strong. Well, it was their fault for his distorted sanity, however. He heard Luster being comforted by his younger ones. His sister told him not to talk about himself. Luster turned away from them and told them not to touch him. Rick told him that he was an elite. How could he lose to a late rookie like him? Hadn't he thought about it? Frido was angry at him and asked what it was. Did he come here specifically to make fun of you? However, his sister stopped him. Rick continued and said that he had mastered his skills just by training them to the last. From the very beginning, he takes and trains one skill to the point of nausea. That's it. This is his advice from his life teacher. Now he has high hopes for him. Luster said that in the next exam, for promotion, he would be his examiner again. And then he will definitely win up, so let him get ready. Angelica bowed to Rick, after which their whole family hurried away from there. 
At that moment, Bluestone told Rick that the numbers of the past were posted there. Rick said that he was fine, and then he went to this wall. Lynette looked at him and said he was calm. When the numbers for the first exam were posted, he was so worried. Rick said he wasn't nervous anymore. He remembers different things over the past 22 years. And then he saw his number. 22 years ago, when Rick was very young and read the legends about the hero Yamato, he read that if he defeats the greatest demon, whose name is Kaiser Arusapayado, then he will receive a treasure that fulfills everything. Wishes, Akasha's diary. However, he failed to defeat this monster. Among the children who craved adventure, he would see that one day he would be the one who would get the treasure and fulfill his desires. When Rick read this, he closed his book and said that he was going to defeat Kaiser, which even Yamato failed to do. He will receive Akasha's diary. This was heard by his mother, who said that being an adventurer is a dangerous job, and no one knows when he will die, but she would like him to choose a safer path. His father told him that one day he would start a family too, so he had to find a decent and stable job. After that, we had a time when he had to go to school. The teacher stood in front of the blackboard and said that today they would check if any of them had an innate skill. There is very little chance of finding a personal skill, however, if it is found, they will be able to enroll in a school of magicians or knights. Rick's classmates started discussing it. One of them asked what was interesting, but did he have a skill? To which he was told that yes, figs there. He had never seen a person with the skill. After a while, Rick was told that they were congratulating him. They found signs of a skill. They don't know yet what kind of power one such things are and don't come from regular training so he can just live as before. After school, Rick rushed home happy. He said he had a personal skill just like Yamato. He himself thought that if he showed up, he would be able to proudly tell mom and dad about him. So he decided he will become an adventurer. After one day, a classmate asked Rick if his skill had been discovered. Rick said not yet. He will not appear in one day. After that, one year has passed. A classmate told him that a year had passed, right? His skill hasn't shown itself yet, has it? Rick already looked more tense and said he wasn't there yet. He's not going to have a baby, is he? Another five years have passed. A classmate told him that it seems that it happens that the signs of a skill never grow into an ability. Rick was already completely desperate and said he knew. It was already evening. So Rick came home and started reading again in his room. In the book, he read that if a person intends to become an adventurer, then he should go through all possible training while he is young. Rick closed the book and put it on the table where he saw the letter. The letter was addressed to him, where it was written that it was a letter of enrollment. It was written in the letter itself that they were currently offering him the rank of clerk in the guild's reception area under the name Tiger Trail. And now another 14 years have passed. Rick was still working at that very guild. He said the request number is 3457. This is the elimination of mucus that has bred in large quantities. And then he'll deal with Lockstone. The destruction of 30 slugs is accepted. Here is their reward. The man he gave the award to asked if there were any cool applications. Something a little illegal, however, for a good reward. Rick told Zyde that he knew that no one would leave such a request in their wilderness, right? Zyde took out her ID and told him that as long as he was shut up in this wilderness, then let him just look. Rick looked at this ID, which said that it was the Guild Adventurer's Registration Certificate. Zyde received the rank of B. Rick was very surprised and asked if he had really received the rank of V. Zyde said that this was exactly the case. With this, he can finally do something more than just be an adventurer. He would pay him for the way he treated him when he held the rank of F so they can have a drink. After this drinking session, Rick trudged back home. He himself thought that Zyde had received the rank of B. However, 14 years have passed since their meeting, and this is natural. And at this time he, 14 years later, and he's sitting in the same place with the same job. If he had become an adventurer 14 years ago, he would have been able to. Then he heard some screams. The man rushed past him and shouted that the monster had appeared. Rick, I thought, what is it again? Haven't there been enough of them already? He went outside and saw a huge monster. He thought it was a troll. No, a giant troll. He saw a girl standing right next to this monster. He immediately rushed to her aid and thought, what is she doing there? Did her legs go numb? After that, he stood in front of her, protecting her and said that it was dangerous here. This girl told him to move away. After that, with only one wave of her hand, she chopped this giant into small pieces. This girl turned out to be Lynette. She thanked him for saving her. And she told him that, however, he should not worry, because as he saw, she was an adventurer. Rick has not yet recovered from what he saw. Lynette asked, what, is something wrong? Rick was still in a lot of shock, but he still told her that he wasn't. He got up from the ground and said that he only wanted to save her. But in the end, he was saved himself, so thank her. He asked what her name was. The girl introduced herself and so did Rick. 
He said he wanted to ask her something. She's strong, right? She's probably rank B, right? Lynette said no. Rick asked, what does a rank mean? It's just incredible. Although he worked in the guild's reception area, he had never seen adventurers in action before. He didn't even know how strong they were. Obviously, the A rank has terrifying power. However, Lynette said no. Her rank is not even A. Rick was surprised by this and asked what was going on with, wasn't it? Is she really that strong? Lynette took out her certificate and said she had an S rank. Rick had not expected this in any way. He looked at the girl again and thought that she was so strong, despite her unusual card. It seems that the general staff is monitoring her data. He had never seen such maps. She is insanely and incredibly strong. Just a first-class adventurer. He told her that then let her let him ask. When he was a child, did his dream was to defeat the Kaiser. This is good, however, if he turns 30 and wants to become an adventurer, then how does she think he will succeed? Lynette said that earlier he wanted to save her. He has courage, and this is the most important thing for an adventurer. Rick was already very happy and said that this means that. However, Lynette interrupted him and said that, however, he knows about the peculiarities of the magic reserve, right? Rick said that it's difficult for those over the age of 20 to raise the level, right? It's not only difficult, it is impossible to raise the level, but it is important for adventurers to have at least some reserve of magic. Without it, he's already dead. The chances of him being able to become an adventurer are zero. Rick completely lost all hope and said that's how it was. Then, what kind of relief is it? Since the first class adventurer has confirmed it, he will finally be able to score on his pipe dream. He met such a wonderful girl, how good it feels for him. He would like to take her out for lunch. Yes, he's joking. Then Lynette said it was okay. Rick looked at the girl questioningly. The girl said she could give him some time tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Or maybe another day would be better. The next day, Rick came to work happy. Arisa noticed this and said that he was glowing today. Rick said it was great. They need to work hard today. The girl said he was too joyful. Then Zaid came to him. He told Rick to hurry up and give him the task to defeat the Shadow Wolf. Rick smiled and said he understood. Zaid didn't expect this attitude from Rick. He was surprised and asked what was wrong with him today. My pants are full of joy. The working day finally came to an end and Rick joyfully left his workplace. He thought it was a date with such a nice girl. This happens only once in a lifetime. If the evening goes smoothly, he will get to know her better and. But then he heard someone shouting that monsters. They're attacking again. Rick was very disappointed by this and thought that he should be allowed to enjoy this day. A man appeared in front of him, who saw Rick on his knees and asked him what he was doing. Does he really cry for the death of all the inhabitants? Rick said that hardly one monster is capable of such a thing. However, the man told him that he was not just one. There are a lot more of them. There are about 30 monsters in that place. Rick tensed up and asked what was really in that place. After that, he no longer began to think about anything and rushed in that direction. The man shouted at him to come to his senses before it was too late. Rick was very worried about Lynette, so he immediately rushed there. But the girl was unharmed. He told her that there was no reason to worry about him. Lynette looked at him and greeted him. Rick was horrified and thought that there was not a drop of blood on her. She's a real monster with a cute face. But then he looked around and saw that the monsters were just arriving. He said they were still coming. What is going on here? Lynette said she would be a little late with them. So let him leave this place. Rick was scared and said he wouldn't want to stay here, so he would go. But he saw how the girl felt sick. He immediately stopped and asked, what happened? Lynette said it was magic. It's bad. At that moment, one of the monsters attacked them. But Zaid came to their rescue. He told Rick that their date stinks of all kinds of animals. The rest of the adventurers also came to their aid and helped them as best they could. Zaid said that the guild had given them an urgent task. So let him go with his girlfriend, and they'll figure it out on their own. After that, he rushed into battle himself. Rick also watched this fight because, to be honest, he doesn't want to just watch this, this fight of adventurers. He thinks he's given up, but isn't he jealous? Lynette told him to listen to her. He asked what had happened. The girl said that she really asked him to tell everyone to leave this place as soon as possible. It's very dangerous here. Rick smiled and said that there was no reason to worry, because Zaid and the guys were already there. Lynette said no. He's flying there right now, a dragon, and it's already very close. Rick, of course, did not believe her and said that this question could not be. This is definitely a strange situation, but the dragon is unlikely to be involved. Lynette said that her body is due to an injury that happened to her once. When encountering dragon magic, she loses control of the magic in her body. Rick said what it means. The girl said yes, without any doubt. Rick asked if it was serious, and at that moment, Zaid and his team dealt with the last monster. 
He cursed and said that he had lived here all his life and the monster had only attacked five or six times. And then what is it? Rick turned to them all and told them they needed to leave. He's getting close. Then the girl noticed something in the sky and asked what the hell was that. Everyone else also looked up and saw the dragon there. Zaid asked that they were just joking. Why is this creature flying to this village? Rick said that was just the reason why all the monsters had grouped up and escaped from him here. Zaid said that it is said that in the battle against the dragon, if there are not at least five ranked fighters in the team, then it is better to leave immediately. However, the dragon had already landed. Everyone tried to escape from this place, but there was some kind of invisible wall in front of them. Everyone guessed what was going on and said that he had created a barrier. They ran off in another direction. However, the dragon was right behind them. At that moment, they hit the invisible barrier again. Zaid said it was very bad. The barrier didn't even crack. And then everyone noticed Rick, who was standing right in front of the dragon, and did not even try to escape. Zaid asked what he was doing. He shouted to Rick that it looked like he had forgotten that he was an ordinary clerk. It's completely pointless to die like this. Rick said it was true. At this rate, he would still die. However, if he died in battle with him, then perhaps he would die as an adventurer. That's what he does. He himself thought that even though he said it, he was not capable of fighting such a creature. One of his blows is enough to grind him to powder. However, it's worth leaving everything to Zayed and the others and running away yourself. It's time for him to run. Being an adventurer is a very dangerous job and no one knows when they will die. He remembered the words of his mother which I told him that she would like him to choose a safer path. His father then told him that one day, he too would start a family, so he should find a decent and stable job. Rick thought that thanks to Zide, he would have a chance to survive. He just needs to run away. He won't stop. His blood is on fire. Everything is right. Just like always, he wants to die like an adventurer. Zide turned to his team and said that they would not allow some clerk to fight on the front line. Lynette looked at Rick and thought that it seemed to her that he himself understood how useless he was against the dragon. But this was recklessness and despair or... Zide said it was very bad. He's attacking them. They should avoid his breathing as much as possible. And at the same moment, the dragon attacked them. Despite the fact that everyone tried to get away from his fiery breath, everyone still fell to the ground and was injured. Zaid said that one of his attacks left no chance of victory. People cannot defeat this creature. Lynette thought that if she could fight, Zaid looked at the dragon, who was about to attack them with his breath again and said that was it. They're already dead. But he finally got his B rank, and everyone was already ready for the fact that they would die. But then the dragon stopped for some reason. Everyone looked at him questioningly, and they saw Rick next to him, who didn't look very good. He was very injured and could barely stand on his feet. But still, he was not going to give up and thought that he would gain. At that moment, he heard a voice that told him that the skill had been acquired. A unique skill called Reckless Soul is activated. While Rick was distracted by that voice, the dragon attacked him. Everyone who was watching was very scared. Zaid couldn't believe his eyes and asked, what happened? Rick picked up this dragon and threw it to the ground. Zaid asked, what was it? Is this really their Rick? Lynette said she didn't think he wasn't capable of using magic. However powerful it was, it was even visible to the eyes. Rick thought it was his skill. He's been a dumbass for a long time. He wasn't so scared anymore, so he turned to this dragon and told him to come over. Let him let you test his skill on him. The dragon attacked him with its flame again, but Rick stopped it and repelled it. The dragon was defeated. Rick said it wasn't bad. Then he collapsed. He woke up already in bed. He abruptly remembered what had happened recently and screamed that he was injured. It was Lynette sitting next to the bed, who said she was asking him not to work his ass off. All the magic chains in his body were broken. He was on the verge of death. Rick asked her how long he had been sleeping. Had she been with him all the time? Did Lynette say yes? He slept for about a week. Rick looked at her in surprise. The girl said that she belongs to a group called the Orichalcum Fist, and she wants to invite him to join them. He had never trained, however, the way he had gathered his resolve in a difficult moment. Such people will definitely be able to become strong. She guarantees him. He can become an adventurer. Their goal is to defeat Arisopiado, and he's good for it. Rick couldn't believe it and said it was the first time in his life he had been told such a thing. What she said is true, isn't it? Rick couldn't contain his emotions and started crying. He said that he could really become an adventurer. Lynette smiled and said yes. All these years have been brought in one instant. Now Rick was standing in front of the winner's board and where he saw his number. Lynette said that she congratulates him, now he is an official adventurer. Rick thanked everyone and said that he wanted to thank the 10-year-old himself for never giving up until today. 
He became an adventurer. After one day, the exam was already over. Rick went to see Lynx. He asked that he would be discharged tomorrow, right? Since he's having a party, did he forget about the promised booze? Lynx said it sounded good, so they're going to drink in honor of its successful completion. Rick asked that where would they go? Lynx said that he actually wanted to know the secret of his power. If possible, he wants to see their team's hideout. What does he think about it? He looked at Rick's expression and asked where the grimace came from. A few more days later, Lynx had already fully recovered and headed where Rick told him to go. The man thought that Rick had asked him to put on his best equipment, however, he is far away in the mountains, and he has not yet met any monsters. He took the papers in his hand and began to read. He said that the territory of Restroy, Arctos District, Number 13, Bikey Castle. It's here. Lynx looked at this castle and said that for some reason it seemed to him, or it was a demon castle. Next to the gate he saw a bell, which he rang. Rick came out to greet him. He apologized for disturbing him. He is ashamed that he has come all this way, and that is why he has been waiting for him all the time. Lynx followed him and said that there were no monsters nearby. Why is this so? Rick said that the monsters are not coming to the castle. Lynx then asked what his equipment was for. Rick decided not to tell him everything right away and said that he would find out about it later. He came to the door and said that they were asking for mercy. There they were met by Lynette, who also greeted Lynx. Lynx thanked her for that time. Lynette said she hoped he would be comfortable. Then Alice ran down the stairs. She was obviously looking for Rick and looked very happy. Lynx looked at this girl and wondered if it was a girl, if it was definitely a child. If only his daughter were as lively. But then Alice used her magic. Lynx didn't expect this in any way and thought you were too sudden. Is this really level 6 magic? He can't stand up to her. Rick came to the defense of Lynx and repelled Alice's attack. He scolded her and said that you can't play in the castle. He's already told her 23,000 times about it. Alice pouted and said that he didn't want to play with her. Lynette told her that if this happened again, did she think it would be worth depriving her of food? Alice was very scared of this, so she threw herself at Lee's feet, no, and began to apologize. She said that she didn't really want to do this, but there was nothing to be done. And that's why she's not taking her treats, right? Rick turned to Lynx and apologized to him. He told him that he would go and play with Alice for a while. If they leave, she'll do something again. Lynx said he understood. And while he's busy, can he see the castle? Rick said he didn't mind, but he asked him not to take off his armor. Lynx said that, of course, because he has a family waiting for him. After that, he went out into the garden and thought that this garden, it's not that badly ruined. Then he saw someone in the garden in the distance and thought, is there really someone there? It was Mizzet, who was inventing something again. Lynx approached him and apologized if he was distracting him. Mizzet looked at him and said that Rick said his friend was coming. After that, the men got to know each other. Lynx asked what he was doing. He had never seen it. Mizzet said that this is one of his magic items. It's his hobby, to invent something like that. Great, he's ready. The name of this weapon is Super Barrel, Model 6, Version, Patricia. He's finally done. Does he want to test it? Lynx asked, is it really worth it? Myat told him to take her like this and use his magic, and then he should pull the trigger. Lynx listened to him attentively and said that it was clear. Mizzet said his target is over there. Lynx said yes. Littlefinger told him to aim and shoot. As soon as the Lynx fired and the target reached the target, there was a huge explosion. However, Mizzet was not very happy about this and said that the ashes were still there. Lynx said that his evaluation criteria were strange. He himself thought that this form gets similar damage from a similar type of weapon. If it were mass-produced, it would completely change the balance of power. After that, Lynx returned to the castle again and thought, what about this team? Are they really always doing the hell that? Then he saw the open door and thought, is there really someone in this room? Lynx carefully walked over and glanced slightly into the room. Bluestone, without even lifting his eyes from the book, said he wouldn't mind if he came in. Lynx came into the room and apologized for the intrusion. He looked around and said it was incredible how many books there were. Are they in the library? Bluestone said no. This is his room and a place for knowledge. He feels better when he is surrounded by books. Lynx thought that perhaps he would not understand the meaning of these books. Come to think of it, he would definitely be able to have a normal conversation with this guy. He said that means he also participated in Rick's training, didn't he? Bluestone said it was true. Is he really interested in his tinting? Lynx said yes. If possible, will he show how he trained him? Bluestone got up and said he had good eyes. They shine just like Rick's. He's free until dinner so they can practice. Let him follow him. Lynx was very happy and thanked him. Meanwhile, in the forest, Lynette was picking mushrooms. And then she heard someone scream. She saw Lynx falling from above and caught him. 
Lynx didn't look very well right now and said he was alive. The girl put him on the ground and asked if he was okay. Lynx thanked her, and then he noticed a huge monster that was lying not far from them. Lynette said these are the ingredients for tonight's dinner. Lynx asked if she was really hunting him. The girl said yes. She also drew attention to the leg weights and asked that it was the work of Bluestone, wasn't it? Lynx said yes. He told him he wanted to practice. These things weigh 500 kilograms. He put them on and began to climb the mountain at an angle of 7 Tidic. Of course, he fell down. And if it wasn't for her, he would probably have died. Lynette said that Rick often died during training. The man was surprised and asked, did she just say that he was dying? Lynette said it was time for her to start cooking dinner, which was why they should go back to the castle. She will carry his weights. She took them in one hand and lifted this huge carcass with two hands. The man asked her if she was okay. Lynette looked at him questioningly and asked what was he talking about. Meanwhile, Rick was scolding everyone else, and he turned to Bluestone and asked what he had done. He understands that Lynx almost died. Bloaton said he would have resurrected him, however, as usual. Alice said she wanted to play with her uncle too. Rick told her not to dare to think about it. He has no idea if he's alive or not. Mizzet said that he should have assumed that such a thing could happen and why did he leave it one? Rick said he almost blew it up. Lynette came in just then and told Rick that he didn't have to worry. She brought it safely. Link said he was sorry to bother you. Rick came up to him and said he was so glad. He was saved at the last minute. Lynx asked if he was surprised that he had survived at all. Bluestone said that they would practice a little, and he thought that everything would be fine. However, it turned out to be one of the three sayings of the Orichalcum Fist that cannot be trusted. How many times has he died? Rick ignored his questions and said that then they would go inside. Lynette cooks the best. After a while, they all sat down at table one and started eating. Lynx said it was delicious, which he tried. Many thanks to them for the food. Lynette said they should forgive her if she wasn't fully prepared. Bluestone said that now it was possible to talk. He turned to Leeks and said that he would tell him something about someone from the center. Lynx asked what about what? Bluestone said it was about six treasures. He knows all about these magic stones, doesn't he? Lynx said it was from the Yamato legend. Bluestone said that when the six treasures come together, the dungeon where the legendary Kaiser sleeps, these magic stones will open the spiral of passage. Rick said that now they are in search of these six treasures. Maybe he even knows something about it, doesn't he? Link said that sort of. In the mountains near the Northern Guild, wyverns suddenly began to appear in large numbers, and there they noticed a red glow. Rick said that's where their next target is. The girl was cleaning at the Adventurer's Guild and thought that she was constantly looking after the guild base, and after all, she was finally an adventurer. Is this really such a dangerous job? The danger is also zero. It's not dangerous. She's just a fairy and she's of little use, but she wants to go on some kind of mission and exterminate monsters. At that moment, she heard some kind of showdown. Rick and his team came to the guild in order to take a task. Bluestone asked why they couldn't take this order. If the danger rating is 82, then it won't be a problem for them. The man they approached in order to take that assignment was very scared and said that, of course, it was true. However, this girl looked at them in horror and thought that these were the same five adventurers. The man said that he knows that they are all very strong, and he does not like it himself. A minimum of four people are required for this task. The girl was already staring at them in surprise and thought that this was the first time she had seen the boss so submissive. Who are all these people? Rick said that these requirements. There must be four people in the team and two of them must be of a rank or higher. And that's why they should temporarily accept someone into the team. Bluestone said it was understandable. Expected from a former clerk. After that, he turned to the guildmaster and asked if he would find an assistant for them then. The man immediately jumped up and said that's right. And Ray called. The girl who was cleaning. The man asked her to come to him and urgently. He said hurry up. The man couldn't stand it and got up from his seat. He walked up to her and grabbed her by the shoulders and said that earlier she had asked him to give her a task with the highest rating. It's a great opportunity, and that's why why doesn't she go with them. He begs her very much, and immediately thanked her for agreeing. Ray said that, of course, she wanted to join their team, but Bluestone approached her and asked that she was their assistant, right? After that, he introduced himself to her and said that he couldn't wait to work with her. Ray thought that this guy wouldn't accidentally confuse her with lunch. After that, the four of them went on the same mission. Rick said that he occupies 82nd place and needs to destroy the breeding environment of monsters. It couldn't be more dangerous. Ray asked him what rank he was. Rick said that he had recently passed the E-rank exam. 
Ray said she was planning to turn him in too, and could he give her any advice? Rick told her not to bully the examiner's relatives. Ray thought that their group looked quite unusual, but this man looked like an ordinary middle-aged newcomer. It's too rude, but she wouldn't want to end up like him. She's thinking right, isn't she? Alice pointed ahead and said that's over there. Bluestone said it was clear. They're almost there. And then they found a huge monster that was eating another one. Ray was very scared and froze in place. She asked if it was really a wyvern. The girl herself thought that it was obvious that the danger rating of singles was 7. It's not that bad. She said that wyverns, once they engage in battle, they immediately start calling their relatives. And this is very bad. They cannot be allowed to do this, and what is their strategy? Bluestone asked what the strategy was, right? About this then he, Ray told him not to stand so close. And at the same moment, Bluestone struck at this monster. He looked at Ray and said he would just hit. Ray was shocked by this and asked, what did he do? You'll get other wyverns, too. Bluestone said that's why he didn't kill him right away. Race asked him if that was why he was unarmed. Bluestone said how noisy she was. He turned to Rick and asked him to take her away from here. Rick said it was fine. He turned to Ray and said they had to go. She doesn't want to turn into ashes, does she? Ray told him not to talk like it was even possible. After that, Rick took her to a clearing away from the monsters. Ray asked if it was okay to leave them alone. Rick sighed and said that everything would be fine. Ray looked up into the sky and saw a huge cloud of the same monsters and said that even a rank adventurers had no chance. They have to help them. She tried to rush to them again and repeated that they had to help them. Rick grabbed her by the shoulder and told her to stop. There is no point in going there, because she will not help in any way. Ray said that was true, but she couldn't let them die. Although temporarily, however, the same part of their group. Rick said she's a good person, he thinks she'll make a good adventurer. And besides, let her just score. They'll be fine for sure. Ray couldn't believe him in any way and said that how could he do that. And then the corpse of that very wyvern flew towards them. She even knocked the girl down. She looked at this body and thought he was dead. But it can't be, because they are so far away. Then, in the distance, she saw a whole hurricane with these monsters. She asked, what is it? Is this magic? Rick stood in front of her and said that as he had already said, these two would be fine. After that, he picked up Ray and told her to be careful, and then a wyvern got in their way. Ray looked at her in horror and asked if it was really a red wyvern. He's almost like a dragon the danger of one individual is 12. Even a rank wouldn't be easy. They have to run. Rick told her to run as hard as she could. Ray told me what he was up to. Rick said he just wanted to make sure of something. Ray was still scared and said she didn't understand what he was doing. They need to leave as soon as possible. Even if the E and F ranks combine, he will tear them apart in a second. Rick asked her if that was why it would be the best decision to back off. Ray gathered all her willpower and said that if that was the case, then she would fight too. However, Rick disagreed with this, saying no. He'll deal with him himself and let her run away. Ray said no way. She won't leave him. Yamato, who was an example to her, would never leave his allies. Rick smiled and said that was good, then let her cover for him. After that, he struck at the monster. With this blow, he blew off his head. Ray no longer knew how to react to all this, she was just horrified and in shock. Rick said it was okay. Fine, it is very good. He's fucking strong. Ray asked why, then, he asked him to cover up. Without magic, and even with one hit. Is he exactly E rank? Rick said it was, but it took a long time to explain. Ray said it looked like it. Just at that moment, Alice and Bluestone returned. Ray said she could handle dozens of wyverns in a short time without getting a scratch. Who are they anyway? Alice said they had one of the stones. As they thought, is this their habitat? Rick said he did it. Ray asked if he would really eat a wyvern. The next day came and Ray, as usual, carried out his basic tasks. Then her boss came up to her and thanked her for yesterday. She saved him from a bad situation. It's better not to joke with those adventurers. But Ray didn't react to him at all. The boss asked, what is it? What was she thinking about? Ray came to her senses and said that it was nothing. It's about yesterday. Those guys are really cool. The boss said that's what she meant about them. Their group is the strongest on the continent. They are all s rank monsters. Ray said she wondered if she could achieve this if she continued to be an adventurer. The man told her not to scare him. Is she planning to leave this guild? Ray, as if she hadn't heard his question and said that it was fine. However, before she starts, she will take the E-rank exam. The boss did not expect this from her and repeated his question. Once again, asking her if she was really planning to leave the guild. Meanwhile, Rick and the others had already returned home. 
they got the treasure. Bluestone said it was one out of six, a crimson petal. She radiates pure magical energy that summons monsters. No one has resonated with her power yet, so we need to find the remaining stones. He turned to the Mizzet and said that he could not. Mizzet said it was good. Alice told him that she wanted to help too. Mizzet said she would blow up the whole castle, and that's why she didn't. Alice called him greedy, and Mizzet said he was starting. Rick thought he was quietly using super complex magic. Misset began to recite a spell and said that the mountain wind, heavenly water, earth and man, the light of the past, present and future, let them guide them to where their journey ends. Level 6 Magic Rolling The real map did not appear. Rick said it looked like a big and developed city. Is this the capital of the kingdom? Lynette said that if that was the case, then there should be a castle there. Blauston said it was a Jarek Utopia. Martial arts are very popular in this country. Of all the places, the Colosseum is the most popular. The next stone should be there. 400 years ago, Herak Utopia was a small town in the desert. However, then the fourth king, whose name is Alexander Herak Utopia, built the Colosseum. And during the tournaments, Alexander fought without any weapons. He has fought 10,000 fights and has never lost. People wanted to beat him up. A crowd of onlookers from all over the continent came to see such a sight. Without noticing it, a small city has become a large country. Alexander literally raised the country with his fists and was called the first king. Rick said that was it. He briefly told the whole story. Lynette said that clearly combat entertainment had started to evolve gradually. Bluestone said he would love to talk to one king. Rick said that if he were alive now, the continent would be doomed. They entered the city, which was very busy right now. Rick said they wanted to ask the locals about the stones, but who should they ask? That Rick noticed a man near him who was molesting a girl. The girl put her head down and asked the man to stop. The man told her not to be so cold to him. He only insists that she go to the hotel with him. The girl said no, because he was bothering her. Rick, I thought, is there really a redneck in the middle of the street? It seems that this country is full of such types. But he didn't even have time to react to this in any way as Bluestone had already gone to deal with him. He said he would like to ask them a couple of questions. The man asked him what they needed. He called him names and asked if he was crazy. At least he knows who he is. He's a gladiator. Blowen said that this is probably the most popular work here. However, you can't tell from him that he is very popular. The man got angry and asked if he was a greyhound. Now then they will go and talk. Bluestone said he didn't mind. After that, they went into the first alley and a few seconds later, Bluestone came out of there unharmed, dragging the same guy behind him. Rick said the cat girl's name was Melissa. What about this guy? The guy said his name was Gortz, and he called Bluestone a master. Rick was surprised and thought that the master, Blow 100 said they wanted to ask them a couple of questions, and he turned to Rick. Rick said that he had now taken out the very stone that he had shown them. Melissa said he was handsome. Gortz asked, what is it? Incredible magical aura. Bluestone asked them if they have seen exactly the same stone, but yellow in color. They are sure that he is somewhere in this country, However, Rick thought that it was unlikely that anyone he met would know anything about this, so he would have to be patient with them. To Rick's surprise, Gord said that he seemed to have seen something like this before. Melissa also said that she, too, however, is not close. Rick was surprised and asked if it was really serious. But where? Melissa said she doesn't remember exactly what she saw. And just at that moment, a noise was heard from the direction of the main street. The noise was literally overwhelming. They announced that now is the greatest event. The greatest events in the entire continent. The tournament of the first king is declared open. The proud man said that it was a parade in honor of the opening of the tournament. Melissa asked him what he was doing this month, didn't she? She was looking forward to it. Lynette asked what else is the one king tournament. Gord asked if she didn't know. This is an ultra large scale tournament. Every year, more than 500,000 people take part in it. Lynette asked, is that really it? Gord's told his master to look at it. He's standing over there. He has been winning this tournament for three years in a row. This is Calvin Erwolf. He's so cool. He wants to be like him. Lynette said it was clear. This man. It seems that only high-level creatures can participate in the tournament. Bluestone said it showed. He's quite capable. And then Melissa and Gord screamed together. Rick shuddered and told them not to make so much noise. What is it? Melissa pointed ahead and said that's over there. Let them just take a look. Rick asked where to. The girl said that she was in the very center. On the belt of the champion. It's a yellow magic stone. And then Rick finally got it. Kelvin is getting ready for the festival. People saw him passing by and said that he was the champion. And they wished him victory. Kelvin wished me a good workout and thanked me. During the training, a man approached him and asked what was going on with him. Kelvin looked depressed and said he was pretty good. 
The man said that it means it's not good. It is unfortunate. Because with such opponents he is not able to give his best. Kelvin said yes. He hopes that at least this year will not disappoint him. Then Rick came to him with Lynette. Rick asked if he could have it for a minute. Kelvin is surprised, but he bet on them and thought who these people were. At the first glance, he noticed that she was absurdly strong. Although her behavior does not correspond to this. However, this guy. He's well built, but about his powers. He doesn't feel any magical aura. So who is he? The old man asked them if they were really fans of Kelvin. Did they really go so far as to decide to follow them? This is a violation of rights. Rick said no. That's not why they're here. They're adventurers in this city. They're looking for one of. Then Bluestone appeared behind him and told him to speak a little faster. Vic said no. Because we must not forget about the simple rules of decency and politeness. Bluestone said he doesn't like to beat around the bush and neither does this man. Kelvin stared at him and thought, is it really a talking orc? That's not the point. This guy is worth it. Bluestone approached him and said that he wanted him to give him his belt. Rick said it was too straightforward. The old man asked what the hell. What does he mean by that? Bluestone apologized and said he forgot to say. The stone is on his belt. The fact is that one of the members of their squad was completely obsessed with this stone. And that's why they searched for it for many years and finally found it. Are they willing to trade it for another artifact? The old man said that it was enough to pour. Have someone kick them out of here already. But Calvin stopped him and said that he was on his own. He has a special nose. Thanks to him, he can recognize a pure lie, and he believes it. Obviously, he can't just give them the belt. The belt is the pride of all residents of this city. They want the stone that's on the belt, don't they? He won't just give it to them. There is only one way to solve this problem. This is to win the One King Tournament. Bloaten agreed with him and said that it was true. This is quite reasonable. Thanks to him, but they'll probably go then. When they left the building, Rick asked if he had understood correctly. Would they really do that? Bluestone asked if he hadn't heard what the champion was talking about. The old man told Kelvin that he shouldn't have let them go. Maybe they should hire security. Kelvin said that doing nothing was the best solution. Otherwise everyone would have suffered. The old man was surprised and asked what he was talking about. They don't look good enough to think that way. Kelvin chuckled and asked if they weren't good enough, right? The three of them are special. It looks like this tournament is going to be a lot of fun. Meanwhile, registration for the tournament has already begun. A girl in a special suit said that they were here. Here everyone can take the qualification test of the Western League to participate in the One King tournament. Rick remembered the words of his senpai, who said that if they won the tournament, they could get the train in an honest way. Rick said that he said it was like it was natural but it wouldn't be that easy. Lynette said that if she had practiced too, she could have participated in this tournament. Rick said no. She had already gathered enough information and supported them. He himself thought that he did not want to remember those events again. He said that, however, he is concerned after Senpai left for the Eastern League one. At least he prays that no one will die. Then they announced to him that the preparation for the test was completed. So he has to go to the test area. Rick got up and said okay, then he went. He went into a room where he was met by a man who asked that he was Rick, right? He will be responsible for one of the exams. Rick said it was nice to meet you. The man said that the test would be in the form of a simulated battle. His opponent will be randomly selected from the list of people who became this year's gladiator. Even if he doesn't win, but his strength is above average, then he will pass. Rick said he understood. He asked the old man, how strong is his opponent? The man said that yes, in just four months she had risen from five leagues to one. She is the genius of their world. Then the same girl burst in and apologized for being late. Let this mortal see. Rick immediately frowned and thought that this voice and manner of speech. They're joking, right? The girl said her name was Angelica. But then she saw her rival and lost all her ardor. Rick himself was not happy to see her and said that a lot of time had passed. The man was surprised and asked if they really knew each other. Meanwhile, the man just decided to go into this building where the very test was taking place. A guy was passing by and called out to him. He asked Nicholas if he was really going to watch people take the qualification test again. He's gone too far. Nicholas said that he was the only one who liked to watch this test, but he decided to criticize it, right? Fans don't even know this, but every few years a dark horse appears. Angelica asked him why he was here. Rick said he had the same question. They were interrupted by a man who said he was sure they had something to remember, but they had a very busy schedule, so let them start already. Rick apologized to him. The man told them to take their positions. Nicholas has already come in and taken his place in order to watch this very test. He saw Angelica and told her what Angelica's ordeal meant. He came at the right time. 
The man raised his hand up and said that the training battle for qualification and gladiator begins. Angelica thought it was bad. It won't affect her in any way, but her pride won't let her lose. He doesn't look like he's strong. However, she wouldn't let him fool her. Her opponent was able to defeat even her brother, who has a rank. Nicholas looked at Rick and thought that this man, at that age, I decided to become a gladiator. Did this old man come to watch? Angelica can handle him quickly. Angelica thought that she would not allow herself to lose her guard. She was about to apply her trademark jerk, but then she stumbled and fell out of the blue. The girl got up and thought that she was so careless that she didn't even look at her feet. Nicholas was also very surprised by this and thought that he had never seen her mistakes. Angelica tried to take action again, but fell down again. This time she thought it wasn't her just now. She looked at Rick, who was in front of her and thought that this just couldn't be happening. Rick asked her how she was doing. He learned this technique after passing the E-rank exam. Angelica stared at him in fright and said that it was a new technique. Rick smiled and said that it was one of the eight secret restraining techniques. Her name is an unexpected undercut. The blows are almost painless. Its essence is that you need to knock the enemy down for a long time. This is also considered an attack. And besides, with minimal damage to life, no matter how strong she is, he does not want to harm her at all. Angelica asked what he was talking about. She herself thought that if she thought about it that way, then how fast would the attack have to be in order for her, a class 2 knight, not to notice it? Are his words really true? But that's not going to happen. This is a very stupid technique. She always says that, however, anything is possible with him. She looked at him again and applied her jerk. However, this time it also fell. Nicholas could no longer contain his indignation and thought what the hell. Angelica, I would never do that. Their examiner thought, is this really the work of that guy? Rick told the girl that her speed was really amazing. It was not easy to find the right moment for such an attack. She still has her desire to win, so let her be ready. Now it's his turn. Angelica realized that she couldn't win, so she told him what she had said in their first duel. She knelt in front of him and held her hands up, after which she said that she was giving up. Rick asked, what is it again? Meanwhile, Lynette was waiting for Rick outside. Then she noticed that Rick was coming towards her. Rick smiled at her and said that he had passed with this. He would be able to participate in the tournament as a gladiator. And now they. But then someone interrupted him and told him to stop. It was Angelica who caught up with him and asked why he was here. Rick said he had the same question. As he said before, he is going to win the next One King tournament. Angelica said that was it really him telling her children's stories again. She sighed and said that when she saw it, she realized it again. He has just insane strength, but it's not enough. He is physically unable to win the tournament. Lynette asked her what she meant. Angelica asked that don't they even know how the system of this tournament works. To begin with, in order to qualify for the finals of the tournament, you need to enter the top 10 of the first league. Obviously, since he just became a gladiator, so he will start from the fifth line. And there is one very important condition. He must win 7 victories and participate in 10 battles. Even so, if he manages to beat all the subscribers, then he also needs to show up in all the leagues. In other words, in one month he must win 10 battles of all 4 faces. And this means that, in general, he has 40 mandatory fights. Being a gladiator is very hard. Many people are able to defeat one league in one month, but 40 fights in a month is just crazy. And that's why it's just physically impossible. Rick said there were only 40 fights in one month. Their tournament represents only 1 50th of their usual training sessions. They will have some more free time, but he will be surprised if it really turns out to be difficult. If not, I asked him that maybe then they would reconsider the plan. Angelica asked if they would leave the human world as soon as possible. The girl told them that they were here. Their preliminary match of the fifth league of the tournament will be held here. Nicholas came here again to watch the match. He thought he saw him yesterday. Angelica and Lynette watched from the stands. Angelica said that his opponent is Grid, who is a master of soul tricks. Lynette asked her if he was famous. He's kind of a weezer. Angelica said that she had noticed correctly. He has one of the weakest classes even for the fifth league. Despite all this, he is famous. Many newcomers have been defeated in battle with him, and he resorts to dirty tricks. Grid looked at Rick and thought he was about 30 years old, wasn't he? He decided to jump over his head. At that age, he joined the gladiators. It's just great. 
he would love to crush it. Their examiner came out to them, said that during the One King tournament, opponents are obliged to show respect to the great King Alexander and that is why any armor and weapons are prohibited, so he must search. After that, the man searched them, and then asked if both were ready for the fighters. Then let them take their places and the duel begins. After the man announced this, Grit bent down to the ground. Rick was surprised and wondered if he was planning to attack him from a distance. Grit thought that a lot of gladiators come here every day and that's why they don't have time to check the heel of their shoes during the inspection. Rick immediately felt it and, frowning, thought it was a strengthening stone. This is without any doubt a magic stone that increases the power of the attack at the moment, and this is definitely a scam. While Rick was thinking about it, Grid had already made one move. He approached it with great speed and threw sand at it. Rick couldn't move his arms. That's what Grid wanted. He clenched his palm into a fist and thought that now let him get it, after which he punched Rick in the stomach. The man thought that he had already won, so he said that that was it, that now they should meet next year. But then he looked at his broken arm and screamed in pain. Rick, on the contrary, looked upset and said that without any training and using a stone, his arm couldn't stand it. Grid was obviously not ready for this and thought that he was breaking stones with one blow, and without any scratch. Rick said that surprise attacks are also one of the types of attacks, but isn't it easier to learn something new or train others? Is this really his plan? So now it's his turn. Rick clenched his palm into a fist and thought that two of the eight secret restraining techniques called blow by. Rick said that the blow creates such a powerful wave that it seems to the brain as if he really struck it. When the opponent loses consciousness without any injuries, Angelica said he was using a stupid technique again. Their examiner announced that Rick had won this fight. Nicholas said that without any doubt, he turned out to be a dark horse. Lynette told him it was a good job. Angelica said that in general, as always, he did well and called him 40. Rick said his name was Rick and he wasn't 40. This is his one win, and there are still 39 fights before League 1. Angelica said that, in his opinion, these leagues are some kind of joke. She will repeat that it is possible to win all 40 fights with his strength, but even so, he will still not see victory this year. Rick looked at her questioningly. Then Angelica said that an athlete can participate in one arena only one time per day. These are the rules. However, there are a lot of people in League 5, and that's why all the arenas are almost crowded. There are dozens of similar arenas and each is located 30 kilometers from the other. And the hardest thing is to find an empty seat. So it doesn't matter how much he surpasses others, but in one day he won't have time to catch up on so many fights. He will be able to fight only two fights in one day. Even she herself took a week to get up to the fourth league. Lynette looked at the time and told Rick it was time for him to leave. Rick said she was right. The next arena is the Greenhill Arena. It is located in District 23 and starts at 11 o'clock. Angelica frowned and said that was not the case. She had already said that she was 30 kilometers away and even on horseback he would not have time to get there in 15 minutes. Rick looked at her in horror and asked what was going on. He wouldn't have time to ride then. They're already late and that's why they'll have to run. Angelica asked if he was joking or something. He pisses her off. They went outside and Angelica asked what he said he would run. That is, 30 kilometers in 15 minutes, right. He's going to break the world record, no matter how he looks at it. Rick interrupted her and said that then they drove off. He got off to a quick start and said it would only take a fraction of a second for him. Lynette asked the girl if she wanted to watch Rick fight. Angelica said yes. She thought about it, however. Lynette interrupted her and asked if she would be taken to the arena then. Angelica said she had a bad feeling about it. Then Lynette picked her up and they followed Rick. Angelica was very scared and asked, what, why are they so high? Lynette, as always, was very calm and said that there were a lot of people on the street. Angelica was so scared that she no longer wanted to watch Rick's fight and said that she should forget about it and let her go. But by this time they had already reached the designated place. Angelica was still very impressed and said that she shouldn't have had breakfast today. Lynette apologized and said they would treat her to lunch in return. And by the time they got to this place, Rick had already won another one of his victories. He went out to Lynette and saw Angelica there, and asked her if she was really here. Angelica said yes, but it seems to be in vain. Rick got upset and said it was his mistake. Of the eight secret restraining techniques, three need to be adjusted slightly. Lynette praised him again and said it was a good job. Rick agreed with her and said that if they continued at the same pace, then in four days they would already move to League One. Angelica just couldn't believe it and said it just couldn't be. Does he really want 10 fights in one day? 
Regardless of the method, it's just crazy. It's been three days already. Rick came to the girl who was handing out the papers. The girl congratulated her and said that he should accept her congratulations. He has reached the first league. Rick had no doubt that he would succeed and said that he was fine. They finished even a day earlier. He turned to Angelica and said that he couldn't have done it without her support. So many thanks to her for that. Angelica said that of the two of them, she was the one who was tired the most. After Rick moved to League One, the three of them decided to go to a small cafe and eat there. Angelica said that besides, despite how easily he got up, it's amazing why no one talks about him. He went around all the faces so quickly that the audience does not have time, and if they were watching, they would not understand anything. Maybe that's why. Rick said he thought she was right. He put a magazine in front of her and told her to take a look at it. Angelica recognized this orc and asked that he was there during his E-rank exam, wasn't he? Rick said yes. His name is Bluestone. He went to the opposite league. To the east, however. Meanwhile, Bloaton was also being tested. He was fighting with a man. The man was confident of his victory and was about to strike at him. He asked Bluestone if he was aware that he would be out for more than 10 days after his stroke. It doesn't look like he's planning to dodge, so let him watch and then he won't regret it. And then he hit him right in the chest. The guy was wary and thought, what kind of feeling is this? It's like he, Bloan didn't even move. He still stood there like an unbending mountain. And after hitting this guy, he took the blow himself and drove him into the ground up to his shoulders. Rick was reading that very article right now. It was written in the article that in his ascent to League 1 in all 40 matches, it costs his subscriber to hit one. Then he knocks him out with one hit. Conducted only in two, five days. Is this the return of King Alexander? Rick asked if maybe they should give up on it all and leave. Angelica said that was her line. Angelica told him that, by the way, let him read the manual. What will he say about this? Rick asked what the manual was, right? That's it, isn't it? He took this manual in his hands and said that in League 1 the opponent would be specially selected for him. All League 1 matches are just preparation for the tournament. The match is considered as a full-fledged entertainment. Thus, the management takes all measures. Rick said absolutely. If they go to the top seven, then they will advance to the main battle. What does this mean? Angelica asked if he was a fool or something. Didn't he even learn the rules? There is a point system in League One. A knockout victory gives two points. Winning by decision gives one point. Loss by decision of zero points. And losing by knockout takes away one point. Ten people will participate and depending on the points scored, the rating will change. Rick said he understood. In any case, he would like to meet a strong subscriber so they will do their best. Angelica said that besides, their fights will be in the same arena. After that, Rick's fight started again. The presenter said that both of them fight only with their fists. Both attack the vulnerable points of the armor. Rick's opponent used his indestructible fist called the boulder drill. Rick used his 3 out of 8 secret containment techniques. He applied his cut past. And after that, his subscriber lost consciousness and fell one scream. He was picked up. Everyone who watched this fight was surprised. The presenter asked what happened. He lost consciousness. And their winner is an old novice. Vic smiled and thought that everything went well. The presenter said that he had won a crushing victory in his debut. Fortune is on his side. Everyone who was watching was shocked. The men asked, what the hell is this? Another one man said that he thought that this old man was a complete zero. I put a tidy sum on it. Nicholas chuckled and thought they were just amateurs. Even he doesn't know who he is, but he's sure of his strength. Angelica said he was fast. She had been waiting for this. Lynette said he had really learned to hold back. If he fights seriously, then there won't be a wet spot left of the enemy. Meanwhile, the presenter announced that now the attention is on the next match. Rank 6 is a dangerous sea creature named Taylor Bliff, and a rank 9 light flash, whose name is Angelica Durumuto. Everyone in the stands began to support her and shouted that they believed in her. Rick was surprised and said that she was quite famous. The presenter said that according to his physique, he occupies, if not the first, then the second place among all the participants. It is ten times larger than its opponent. What kind of strategy will she take? Now they will see everything with their own eyes. The match has already started. Angelica immediately applied her instant step. Taylor dodged. He told her that she was too restless, and he used his level 3 magic called Water Wall. Angelica used her level 2 magic called Thunderbolt. Lynette said, she said that she sees strong. Rick agreed with her. He said she had excellent control of her body and magic. And besides, she is very strong, and she has a large supply of mana. She is a very dangerous opponent. 
In addition to her skills in running using sophisticated magic, thanks to all of this, she is much stronger than her older brother. However, she is at a disadvantage in this match. Taylor told her that with her childish attacks, she was just exhausting herself. He can stand 1,000 of them. She did not notice how she began to move more slowly. After which he attacked her, Angelica slammed into the wall. Rick was so worried about her that he even jumped up from his seat. The presenter said that Angelica suffered serious damage, but all her attacks that Taylor blocked were in vain. She can't continue this match anymore. And the winner is Taylor Bliff. After this fight, Angelica was taken to the infirmary. There, a woman cured her and said that her health was normal, but it was better for her to rest for one day. Angelica told her that she understood and thanked the woman. She sighed, then dressed and left the office. Rick was waiting for her there, who asked what about her health. She looks good. Angelica turned away and said it was none of his business. Rick asked her what he thought, or was she in a hurry then? Angelica asked what he was talking about. Rick said that at first glance it was clear that her opponent had a good defense. She had noticed for herself that they were completely different rivals. And he doesn't think that continuing to exhaust his strength was a good idea. He saw that there were other monsters, however. Angelica couldn't listen to all this anymore, so she interrupted him and said that she would repeat herself, that it was none of his business. However, Rick wasn't going to leave her alone that easily. He followed her and asked her where she was going. Angelica said she was going back to the inn. And why is he following her? Rick said she was at a disadvantage during the match, but she could have won. So why did she keep exhausting herself? Did she have a reason for that? He could have helped her, would she tell him? Angelica stopped and said that everything was right. Okay, it's time to stop being stubborn. She would tell him the reason. The fact is that. But she was interrupted by a noise. They went into an institution where they saw two monsters. One of them was Taylor Near, and he was trying to save the girl from the evil of another monster. Taylor told this monster that she pushed him slightly so that he should let her go. This monster asked who was he talking to. Taylor clenched his palm into a fist and said that he was with no one but him. After that, he struck at him. However, this monster didn't even move. He said Malik wanted to appear cool. Then he grabbed him by the throat and began to strangle him. And then one knocked him to the floor with this hand. He told him that jerks like him couldn't beat him. Angelica asked if he really threw Taylor with one punch. Rick sighed and said that the Draconians. This race is larger than humans, but it is much larger than the Blowstone. Just turned to the girl he had taken hostage. He told her that she pushed him and his drink spilled. And how is she going to fix it? The girl said that she had spilled quite a bit. Did just say he didn't care how much she spilled. All that matters is how mad he is. Whether he's mad or not, it doesn't make any difference. He tore her clothes and said that if you think about it that way, it's much better. Angelica couldn't take it anymore and shouted at him to stop and let her go quickly. Jis was about to hit Angelica and told her to shut up. But then his fist was stopped by Rick, who suggested that they all calm down. Jis got very angry and asked what the hell. They really pissed him off. Are they going to die, or do they want to? Then another one of his race came into this place and told Jis that he should abstain. He shouldn't act rashly until he gets to the main fight. Jis told Snape that he understood him. He's going to have a drink at another bar. Snape apologized to them for bothering him and said that he would not let him pay for all the damage. Then he noticed Rick and asked, is that really him? He finally met him. Rick just looked at him questioningly. Snape said he was the head of the Western League administration. His name is Snape Lysrecht. It's an honor to meet him. Rick shook his hand and said he was very pleased. But how does he know him? Snape asked that. Why was he asking that? It's hard not to recognize people like him. He is the one who was able to rise to the first league in a short time. Rick said he understood. He asked him if he had ever been a gladiator before. Snape was surprised and asked how he knew that. Rick said that when he shook his battle-trained hand, he immediately guessed it. Snape said what else could he say, because he was very perceptive. He's right. That was 20 years ago. As a dragonoid, he was considered physically gifted among humans, and even so he was able to attract attention and gain fame. Dick asked that the guy who threatened them who he was. He almost started a massacre here, and now he's spoiling it like nothing happened. Snape said his name was G.I.S. and he was his younger brother. Unfortunately, when some trifle pisses him off, he becomes very aggressive. However, he also calms down very quickly. He is very strong, and because of this, no one will be able to stop him. He doesn't know what to do anymore. He constantly complicates his work, so once again he apologizes for that. Rick said it was okay. Snape asked Angelica if she still had any complaints. Angelica said no. Snape said it was nice. Health is her main value, so let's hope she takes care of herself. After that, he said goodbye to them and left this bar. Rick and Angelica also went outside. Rick asked the girl if she really knew him. 
Angelica said that yes, she did not like it, but still this man and her fiancé. Rick was slightly surprised and said that he was the groom. Angelica said that this is one of the reasons why she became a gladiator. Rick didn't understand her and asked what she was talking about. Angelica asked him if he knew what her current rank was. Rick smiled and asked what the nine was, right. There is still quite a bit left, or rather rank two, and she will be able to participate in the tournament. Angelica said that, however, she has not been able to raise her rank in the last month. She wants to participate in the tournament in the same way that he did, so that you wouldn't, and that's why she was in a hurry. Then Rick, apparently, heard what Angelica had said, and he, horrified, asked what the groom really was. Angelica told him to calm down, but Rick wasn't going to do that and asked what she was carrying. Angelica said that she had already told him not to pretend that he did not understand anything. It's about her family's situation, and there's nothing special about it. Last year, their parents died due to an accident and that's why they had to settle in the Durham Udo estate. They had no experience in such matters, and that's why everything went awry. They had financial problems. Her famous grandfather turned out to be a real miser. He forced her to renounce her knighthood and married her off to the rich Snape. They needed money very badly, and that's why she doesn't have the right to cancel this engagement. If you remember, he had originally proposed this engagement. He paid a large sum of money for this. And besides, he got the right to sponsor someone at the tournament. And when it comes to her, Snape wants to change the match. He will have a strong and sponsored athlete. Another athlete will attract the attention of the audience with his power, and then he will bet a large sum on the subscriber's victory. And when the sponsored athlete wins, he will be the winner. But he has already returned his money, and if he marries her, then he will become part of the nobility. She thinks he's up to something bad, which is why the easiest way to stop him is to defeat his sponsored fighter before he changes the match. And that's why she has to participate in this tournament. Rick said it was clear. Angelica said that, however, these are just words, because his sponsored fighter is probably the guy Jis, who is his younger brother. The situation is quite depressing. The current one is. Rick interrupted her and said that she should let him train her. Angelica told him not to say it with a face like he was going to kill someone. The first one training day, Rick and Angelica were completely ready for it, and they looked very serious. Rick said that the training is very harsh than she can imagine, so before they started, he would ask her again, is she really ready for this? Angelica, without hesitation, said yes. She has to prepare herself. Rick said he wanted to clarify something else. She said that she started participating 25 days before the start of the tournament, and now she has how many matches left to play. Angelica said she has three more matches left. Since that loss, her rating has dropped and she has been moved up to 8th place. In order for her to rise to 7th place and qualify for the tournament, she needs 3 more points. After their fight with him, she was removed from the tournament for 3 days. And minus 1 point. Rick was surprised by this and he asked if she was serious. Angelica said that she also lost to Taylor afterwards. But in the third battle, she will definitely win. Rick smiled and said that well then they would do it. Long live the training. After that, they went to a dugout area away from the city where their training was supposed to take place. Angelica asked that 10 is about 20 kilometers away, isn't it? Such a distance for running is something with something. However, Crick told her that they hadn't even started yet. After that, he took out weights, which he attached to Angelica's legs and arms. Angelica asked what was going on. What the hell? Vic said that 30 kilograms would do for a start. Angelica said that there are 120 in total. He had to explain it to her. Rick had told her, quite seriously, not to weaken her strengthening magic, or she would die. Angelica asked if it really couldn't have been said right away. After that, he tied one end of the rope around his belt, and tied the other end around Angelica's waist. And then he started running. Angelica clearly did not expect this and asked, what the hell is this? She looked at Rick running in front of her and thought that without any doubt they had accelerated to 100 kilometers per hour and maybe more. Even her jerk is not worth it. Are her legs still intact? She is very afraid. Rick told her that there was a man in this exercise who was faster than her in pulling her along. In order to adapt her body to fast movements, her speed is impressive, but her skills are not long enough, and so he will train her until she becomes faster and more resilient. He remembers Lynette dropping him all the time. Angelica told him to stop and give her a break for at least a minute or two. She can't do this anymore. But Rick wasn't going to stop and said that if she thought she had reached her limit, then she should try again to give one last push. Just a little more. There are only six hours left. Angelica said that he was just not satisfied with her at all. It's not about the limit at all. If they push a little more, then. 
Does he even listen to her? It's been six hours. Angelica could no longer stand on her feet, so she just lay on the ground. She said it was so weird. Her legs are still in place. She was sure that they had fallen off or were torn to shreds, like her shoes. Rick was cheerful and said that training God about boxing with a second grade knight was just something. On his first day, he managed to die three times. Angelica said that he confessed that he wanted to kill her, but she survived one day. Rick asked what she was talking about. It was just a morning exercise. She still has one hour for lunch. After lunch, they practice again. Angelica said that then let them finish it, because she couldn't take it anymore. Rick ignored her words and said that they would see each other in an hour. Angelica asked that why did he suddenly stop hearing her. The fifth training day has already arrived. Angelica was currently sitting in the tavern and eating. She thought she'd had enough. This is not a disaster at all. She signed up for training, not torture. She's not going to repent, but she looks like it from the outside. In addition, he has been going through this for three or four years. Of course, it would be strange if he didn't become strong. Then Rick came up to her and said that she had finally been found. Rick sat down across from her and started eating too. He said it was delicious. Angelica just stared at him in silence and then couldn't stand it, and asked if he had really come to scold her. Let him hurry up and get it over with. However, Rick said no. Quite the opposite. Angelica stared at him in surprise. Rick said that although she escaped, but for two years he also tried to escape many times. And countless times he died. Angelica said he was probably the only person who said such things. One day, during a training session, he blew himself up. Blowstone and Alice came up to him. Blowstone said that he died and he didn't have enough mana to revive him. So he asks Alice to help. After that, Alice used her magic and revived him. Rick jumped up abruptly and asked if he was dead again. Blowstone was standing nearby and asked if he was awake, wasn't he? Well, that's good. Alice shared the mana, and that's why he was able to revive it 2,000 more times, and now they will continue. Angelica listened to this story and said how terrible it was. He has been doing this for two whole years. For her, this is a real. Rick said that he really wanted to give up, but then Blowstone told him that between the suffering he was experiencing now and the regrets after he ran away, what was he willing to put up with? That's what he told him then. And then he asked himself which of the two options would be easier. Angelica asked that he chose the option of compassion, didn't he? Rick said yes. However, even if he had eventually decided that, unfortunately, I would have been better, he would have let him go and said that this was a worthy choice. After his words, he began to feel better. Angelica said that since her youth she had been trained as a noble lady. Social etiquette, dancing, makeup and dresses. She had been taught all this, but it didn't suit her at all. She was born into such a family, and that's why it was her duty to become a good wife and have children, but she couldn't accept it. Of course, she wants to help people, but as a knight, and she wants to help Durumato and help her family. Her dream is to become the strongest knight. That's why she chooses her current suffering. She got up from the table and said that she was going to the same place as before. So let him hurry, because she will be waiting for him. Rick smiled and said that it would be good if he came to her after a snack. Angelica had already reached this place, and Rick and Lynette were already waiting for her there. Rick told her it was slow. Angelica did not expect that he would get there before her and asked if they had really come earlier. Rick said that for the past four days she has been learning only the basics from that day on. She is moving to a new level of training. Her fighting style and her swordsmanship technique are good in one-on-one -on -one battles, right? Angelica said it was true, and he is very attentive. Rick said that if she could use a sword, she would have significantly more wins in League One. Angelica agreed with him and said that, however, using weapons is not according to the rules of the tournament, and it just annoys her. Rick said that, in general, he brought someone who would help turn the hand into a blade. Lena said she was glad to welcome her back. Another 20 days have passed and the final day of League One has arrived. The presenter said that everyone is ready, so it's time to start. Their final qualifying match. Rank 7 is a mad beast named Silva Helgant. There is a rank 8 light flash against him, whose name is Angelica. Only the winner will qualify for the main tournament. Passions are heating up. One of the opponents can be noticed. Angelica is an athlete. She has a completely different look than usual. The presenter turned to one of the commentators, who is a former silver medalist, whose name is Adler, and asked him what he thinks about this. Adler said he had no idea, but she had become much stronger in a few days. With her usual fighting style, she won't be able to defeat her opponent. The presenter said that it turns out that she is at a disadvantage again, isn't it? Well, the match has already started. Angelica won this fight with just one punch. It was very unexpected for everyone. 
The presenter announced that Angelica was winning. Rick said it was great. The training sessions were great. Lynette said it was true. Rick said she was able to use her sword. However, Angelica was not going to stop there and was eager to fight again. The man who was the judge tried to hold her back. Rick said she feels like she's in training right now. The man who tried to hold her back asked her to calm down, because the stranger's mother is over. But Angelica kept saying to herself that training. We need to run. One ton. She needs to be beaten. She doesn't want to die. The man asked what was wrong with her. The presenter said that with this, 14 people who will participate in the tournament have already been determined. After that, at 7 in the central arena, they will conduct a random selection in order to divide the athletes into pairs. The presenter came out onto the battlefield and said that, despite the fact that all the matches for today have already been completed, the reasons why everyone gathered at the Alexander Central Coliseum are them. All these people are winners who qualify for the main tournament. All of them can see 16 elite fighters with their own eyes. However, what is even more important, they will divide the athletes into pairs right now. Everyone gets a piece of paper with a number. They're starting. One was the Western League rank 7 Angelica. She took out her number and the man said she had number 14. The next one was also a Western League rank 6 Rick. He pulled out number 12. Rick thought it looked like he was going to face Angelica in the semifinals. The next one has already been announced. The next one is the one the public always waits for and loves. He won the One King tournament for three years in a row. This is their champion. Calvin, Rick, I thought what to think, just a champion. Angelica thought she was getting GIS now. And it's weird. The man said that Kelvin got the number one. The presenter said that he has the number one, is this really fate? The next one was announced, it was the Eastern League rank one. Blowstone, the woman said that this athlete had become a legend. The audience is going crazy. Rick thought, if you think about it like that, what if it was put together with him? He would have just given up. Blowstone took out number 7. Rick even exhaled and thought, okay, so they'll face off in the finals. The woman said that the next one is a sponsored athlete. Angelica listened very attentively and wondered who it was. The woman announced that it was from the Dragonaut Company. It was Jis. Jis clicked his tongue in displeasure and said that they had already got him all. He came over and started pulling out his number. However, it fell out of his hands. Angelica watched all this carefully and saw how the man who was standing next to this box reached into his pocket and took out number 15. Angelica thought she understood everything. That's how he is. It looks like this guy is reading the numbers. Snape sent it. If his opponent loses too quickly, then it will arouse suspicion and they will not be able to earn money. Top-ranked fighters are ideally suited for their categories, but they have already been dismantled. Why did they let just choose after Blowstone and the champion? An exhaustive Snape. It's a dirty game, but it means she still has a chance to beat Jis. And this means that all this was not in vain. This is a great opportunity for her. It was already the next day. The presenter said that this day has finally come. The main stage of the tournament. One match. Their champion Kelvin is playing against Eagle Eye, whose name is Eddie Grace. The presenter said that everything was correct. The champion is the most important. Blowstone said they would now look at his skills. Rick said yes. The presenter said that the match had already started. Eddie quickly adapts to various combat situations. How will he behave against the champion? And then Kelvin landed his one punch and knocked Eddie out. The presenter said that one clean blow that would blow the wind off Eddie's sails. The champion's reaction is faster than ever. Rick said he wouldn't say his reaction was very fast. He clearly knew what his opponent was going to do. Blowstone said he talked about it himself. His so-called special nose creates difficulties. His race's sense of smell is several hundred times better than a human's, but he has trained and sharpened his sense of smell even more. The electrical signals that are sent by the brain are adrenaline, penetrating into the body at the cellular level. He feels it all through the smell. To top it all off, his training and gladiator experience. At that moment, Kelvin delivered his final blow. The host said it was over. The winner is Helvin. Blowstone said he was an incredible gladiator, so he's looking forward to the semi-finals. Rick said that the gladiators he fought also tried. Angelica said that he knocked them out without any chance of further continuation. Rick said yes, if he said he would reach the semi-finals, it was only a matter of time. Blowstone said that he also said that the other gladiators did a good job too. Rick praised Angelica and said she was great. The training has been good for her. Angelica said she trained until she lost her pulse, so it's not surprising. Rick said that means they've all gone through stage 2. Then someone else found out and said it was Angelica. But who is this old man? The presenter was already announcing the next one. Angelica turned around and saw Snape, who told her to behave properly, okay. The next one was Jis and his opponent was Mr. Allrounder 
whose name is Herman. The start of the match was announced. Jis was already yawning out of boredom. At that moment, Herman hit him in the face. Jis asked if it had already started. Herman called him names and said that it was enough to fool around, and then started wearing a lot of punches on him. Jis still stood motionless and said that he was annoying. Herman thought he was swinging too hard, and then Jis showed its strength. Hermana and Angelica tensed. The presenter said that his physical strength is simply amazing. The one who took this blow has no chance. Herman thought that, however, he would not hit with such a swing anyway. After that, he continued to strike at him again. Angelica said she was shocked by his strength, however even so, Rick agreed with her. Herman thought that in order to defeat him, how many punches would it take? Angelica said he's from the Western League, and he's rank 2. He knocked her out, so there are no means against his hail of blows. Herman, I thought, what is he like? It's not about endurance and defense at all. G.I.S. still stood motionless and said he wanted a drink, but he avoided the blow. But he came up with something. After which, he clenched his palm into a fist and hit the ground with all his might. Herman hit his face and thought, is this really a smoke screen? This is very bad. And then G.I.S. hit him and said he was hit. The presenter said that it was only one punch, and he knocked him out. Has there ever been such a strong sponsored athlete? He's a real dark horse. He is the winner of this match. Jis called them all names and said they'd better keep quiet. Snape said he seemed to be in a relatively good mood. Rick said he was a very strange guy. Angelica agreed with him. She said that such strength and endurance, however, she behaves like a beginner. She doesn't think he doesn't exercise enough. They saw something strange, so they decided to follow him. Angelica came up to him and told him that he had one match scheduled tomorrow. Isn't he too relaxed? Jis asked her what else she was. Angelica said that his opponent is for tomorrow. Jis sighed in displeasure and said that Snape was talking about her. He would try not to hurt her face. After all, it will have a bad effect on the wedding, isn't it? Angelica looked at him with displeasure but said nothing. Jis told her that it was so that she didn't even try to resist. Like that idiot. Just give up and let him relax. After that, he said goodbye and was about to leave. But Angelica did not want to leave it all like that. She stopped him and asked if he had any respect for the other gladiators. Jis grinned and asked what respect is there, or what? He laughed and said of course not. These fools are obsessed with endless training. Even so, they are still worms that are weaker than him, despite the fact that he only uses his father's money. Why should he respect them? Angelica said it couldn't be that he was just messing around all day. Without training, he would not have achieved this form. Jis asked what was the point of lying to him. He didn't make any effort. His body became like that by itself. Maybe he's just a genius. Rick was surprised by this himself and thought that was his strength and endurance natural. Jis was not going to stay here any longer and said that human females should not be so self-confident. So let her behave herself tomorrow. He also won't punch her in the stomach or they won't have children. Angelica was furious. She said she would drink the shit out of him. The second day of the main stage of the One King tournament has begun. Everyone slowly began to gather to watch it. Rick was almost the last to arrive. Lynette waved at him and told him to come here. Alice was sitting next to her and Mizzet. Rick, when he saw them, was surprised and asked if they had come too. Alice said they hadn't seen each other for a long time. They came to support him. Mizzet greeted him too and said that they had come to cheer. Rick said no, because they were just tired of staying at home. They're here for food and women. Then Snape also came up to them, who greeted Rick and asked if anything was busy here. Rick didn't mind, so Snape sat down next to him. But this surprised Rick, so he asked Snape that he usually sits in VIP places. However, why is he here now? Snape said it was the same as him. It's a match between his younger brother and his fiance. Wouldn't he like to see it all a little closer? Then the presenter said that now they are starting two matches for today. Angelica's light flash against Jis from the Company of Dragons. Jis grabbed his head and said he was a little drunk. Angelica, on the contrary, was very determined and thought that she would not allow herself to lose her vigilance. The start of the match was announced. Angelica didn't beat around the bush so much that she immediately applied her instant step and hit Jis right in the chest. Jis got angry and said that after yesterday's match, she still didn't understand. He tried to hit her, but Angelica used her instant step again and deftly dodged. She kicked him in the side again, but I didn't do anything to him. He was still unharmed. Angelica thought that she thought she would easily injure him in this place, however. Jis sighed and said how annoying it was. He tried to attack her again, but the girl used her instant step again and evaded the attack. The presenter said that Angelica was leading him by the nose with her continuous movements. Adler said that the continuous use of amplifying magic for her super short movements requires advanced technique. It's really impressive. 
Jis was already starting to lose his temper and said that how annoying it all was. Angelica said that since he had started, she was interested in one thing. He says that everything pisses him off, then why is he participating in this tournament? Oh, he wouldn't take part just because of his older brother's request, would he? She's right, right. Jis said he has his own goals. She'll understand, yes, a little later. Angelica looked at him questioningly and thought it was useless. Obviously, her punches won't hurt him in any way. Which means that she. She looked at Lynette, who told her that she could. She can do it. Angelica steeled herself and said she would do it. Jis looked at her questioningly and wondered if she was using amplifying magic. Angelica said that she would honestly show him why you shouldn't make fun of other people's efforts. Reverse mana release. An instant step. She herself thought that this was a technique that would turn a hand into a blade. When Lynette came to practice with them, Rick told Angelica that everything was true, but first they would show it to her. And he turned to Lynette. Lynette said that it was good, after which, with only one wave of her hand, she cut the block in half. Angelica was very surprised by this and thought that without any magic, only with the help of one hand. Lynette said that one of the secret body control techniques called cutting thread. Rick said they'd teach her that. Angelica said they were asking too much of an ordinary person. Lynette said it wasn't too much. The only difference is the accuracy. Even Rick can do it. Angelica was holding a piece of paper in her hands, which she was trying to cut with this magic. But she didn't succeed. She said she couldn't even cut the paper. Rick said it was okay, because she had just started. Training and more training, so don't let her lose heart. Angelica thought that of course, if she learns this, then as a gladiator. But more importantly, how will the knight become stronger? Hasn't it always been like this? She could hardly hold a sword once. The trick is to feel the flow of air and hit it flat. Angelica concentrated, and then used the same magic called cutting thread. She was able to injure Jis, who was very surprised by this. Angelica smiled and said it went well. Snape was also very shocked and said that it was simply impossible. Had she cut his skin, even a sword can't be scratched on it. Rick didn't doubt her at all and told them not to look down on Angelica. Lynette said it was as she thought. Angelica is talented. Cutting thread is a very difficult technique, but she was able to master it. She activated the reverse release of mana, a technique she has been studying for a year now and she has adapted it to her own style. Mizzet said that releasing mana back is like closing a hose hole and then abruptly opening it. Then it releases a lot more magic. Rick said that this technique drains the body a lot, but after a month of hellish training, Angelica doesn't care. It has reached the desired cutting thread usage rate and uses an instant step that is charged up to 120%. This perfectly completes her previous tactics. This is Angelica's killer move. Jis got very angry with her and said that she had fucked him up. After that, just like last time, he punched the ground, thereby raising a lot of dust. Angelica thought that was it really a smoke screen again. And then right in front of her face she saw the paw of Jis, who was trying to attack her. Angelica was surprised by this and thought that he was fast. Her mana hasn't recovered yet, which is why she won't be able to dodge with an instant step. But still, she tried to do it and used an instant step, and thus avoided the attack. Jis did not expect this in any way. Angelica thought it looked like he thought she wouldn't be able to dodge it, so this is her chance. She applied the reverse mana release again, an instant step. She used a cutting thread. However, this time it did not work, and Jis was able to dodge. He told her that he couldn't do it anymore. Then he punched her in the stomach. The blow was so strong that the girl flew into the wall, and broke it with her. Jis sighed and said she was a wayward girl. He apologized to his brother and said that this minor splinter was the last straw. He can no longer hold back from such top-notch loot. Angelica was still conscious and asked what a minor splinter, right? Jis turned to his brother again and said that it was enough to try to gamble on bets, because this is not true. Snape said that his goal is betting. The earlier they bet on the winner, the higher the rewards. Back in the beginning, he had bet a fortune that Jis would win. He tries to appear weak in order to weaken the vigilance of his opponent. This is a good and victorious tactic than fighting an unequal battle. Rick asked that he seemed very confident in his strength, right? Snape said that, of course, because his strength was the reason why he stopped being a gladiator. Rick looked at him questioningly. Snape said that they have different mothers, and he first met him when he was eight years old. Back then he was already known as a gladiator, however he has almost all the qualities that are necessary for a gladiator, and thanks, and he has reached the highest level. They had a fight and Snape was beaten up. A perfect genius and a real monster. Jis told Angelica that it doesn't matter how many years she has been training, because this is the level of a crappy commoner. She should be offended by her parents for giving birth to her incompetent. 
But her parents are dead, aren't they? It looks like her parents are the same trash. Angelica couldn't stand such humiliation. She got to her feet again and thought that he was looking down on them, even though he had never trained himself. She would also defeat him with the technique she had practiced countless times. She applied her instant step again and used it under the name Continuity. Just told her to quit already, because he was tired. An instant step, right. He had already seen enough of it and understood her technique. He caught up with her, then grabbed her by the hair and threw her aside. Just laughed out loud and said that was what he wanted. They are annoying commoners. They have nothing but training all the time. What kind of fun is it? He tramples on her like a bug, and she tries her best. She's the best. Rick was very worried about her and said that she was already at the limit. Angelica was shaking all over. She was injured and very tired. Physically, she could no longer continue this fight. But she wasn't going to give up. She thought that she didn't want to lose to him. She didn't want to fall. She doesn't want to fall because she still can. Just told her that she shouldn't have taken a step. She pissed him off, and now he's going to kill her. He released his claws and rushed straight towards her. Rick couldn't stand it and shouted at the referee that the match was already over. The judge tried to say something, but before he could, G.I.S. was already at Angelica's side. But to his surprise, he missed. The blow did not hit her. This surprised him greatly, and he thought that the blow had really been deflected to the side. After that, Angelica collapsed. The judge announced that Jis was the winner. Jis noticed the shoe, and I thought, was his punch deflected by this? He began to look closely at who could have done this and asked who this was. His anger betrayed him. Rick could no longer contain his rage. Jis grinned and said that it meant it was him. Angelica couldn't get up, she was still unconscious, so special workers came and put her on a stretcher and carried her out of the arena. The man asked that she was okay, right? He couldn't stand it when a girl was suffering. Lynette asked where Rick had gone. She was told that he had left for the next match. Alice said it was understandable when he went berserk. Nizit said it was clear this guy had pissed Rick off the most. But on the other hand, he feels sorry for his next opponent. On the way to the arena, Rick met Jis. Jis couldn't walk past him in silence and said that it was his business. Even though he finally got some game, he prevented him from finishing it off. Rick didn't react to him in any way. This made Jis very angry, and he shouted that it was enough to be silent. He also tried to hit him, but the screen calmly passed him by and said that for now, let him be patient. Jis looked at him questioningly. Rick said there was no point in knocking him down now. Tomorrow he will send it flying right in front of the audience. Jis got very angry at this and hit the wall with his fist. He said he was looking forward to it. Nicholas saw Rick enter the arena and said that he had appeared. The man who was sitting next to him asked that he was rooting for Rick, wasn't he? He doesn't see anything special about him. It would be cool if he won more spectacularly, like Blowstone. Nicholas said that was the problem of amateurs. Effectiveness doesn't prove anything. But as for Rick, doesn't he see what kind of power he's hiding? The man said he couldn't see. He is not deprived of strength, but today he has a bad match. After all, his opponent is Mikhail Angelo. He is a master of simplified spells. He is physically at a disadvantage, but his abilities are commendable. He is able to use a level 7 spell without saying it out loud. Nicholas said he didn't like him because he had only money on his mind. The man told him to be able to lose. He will treat him as soon as he takes the money from his winnings. Nicholas looked at Rick, who now went to get his shoe and said that the air around him was different from usual. What's going on? Meanwhile, the presenter announced the speed magician Mikhail and his opponent Rick. Mikhail told Rick that he seemed to be very angry about this girl. Only the strong earn money from these entertainments. What difference does it make? That girl is very pathetic, isn't she? The presenter announced the start of the match. Mikhail immediately used his level 7 magic called Thunderbolt. However, Rick was faster, and while the boy was saying all this, he was already at his side and struck. The winner was immediately announced, which was Rick. Nicholas was very happy about this and asked his friend if he had seen it. This is his real strength. He had noticed it at the beginning. After the victory, Rick immediately ran to Angelica to find out how she was. The doctor told him to calm down. She will have problems with treatment, but her life is not in danger. Rick finally managed to exhale and said that he was so glad. He went to the window where he could see Angelica and thought that even though she had been through a hell of a workout, she had never given up on her dreams or her lifestyle. It's very annoying. He told her to come to his match with Jis, and she will see the result of his training. Meanwhile, there were very fierce battles. There was a blowstone duel now. The presenter said that she had one stroke again. He becomes the winner again. He expands his list by finishing each match with one hit. The next fight was with Kelvin. The presenter said that how strong is their champion. 
he becomes the winner. To be so strong all the time, he would never give up the victory. And now she asks to introduce the top four athletes. They advance to the next stage of their tournament. The four included Kelvin, Blowstone, Rick and Jis. Now Rick went to train one. He wasn't happy with his training at all. He thought it was bad. This is very bad. He needs to try harder. The third day of the main stage of the One King tournament has already arrived. The presenter said that the semi-final fights will begin today. Let everything wait until they take their places. Rick was walking down the hallway when he met Angelica. He asked if she had already been released. Angelica did not even look up at him and said that so much so that she could not worry. Blowstone healed her. Rick said he understood. Angelica told him to forgive her. He spent his time training her. Even if her victory would not benefit him at all, she lost in the end. I lost to a scumbag like him. The girl started crying and said that she made him waste his time on such a mediocrity like her. So please let him forgive her. She went against the will that was pressing on the women of the nobility. She wanted to prove that she could fulfill her dreams. With your own hands. Maybe it would be nice to just listen and marry Snape. Then she would be treated politely and life would be easy for her. Rick, I thought, is Angelica really saying that? Rick walked past her and said she worked hard without complaining. No matter who was watching. This result is his fault. He didn't see how strong Jis really was, so let her forgive him. Angelica objected and said no, because it was her fault. Rick ignored her and said that he really hoped that she would watch this match carefully. Angelica also entered the arena because she wanted to watch this fight. Was she met by Lynette, who told her to sit down here? Angelica thanked her. Snape was sitting next to them, who asked Angelica what was going on with her. How is her health? Angelica stopped and looked at him in surprise. Snape said that in a few days she would become his wife. Couldn't she have been a little more gentle with him? Blowstone asked him if he knew that it had not yet been decided whether Jis would be the winner. Snape said no, because Jis would definitely win. He knows that Rick has a power that surpasses common sense, however, he cannot defeat Jis. The what about them, all of them. If you look at their strength, without prejudice, then in their opinion, who will win? All at the same time, without hesitation, replied that it would be Rick. The presenter announced that the old newcomer Rick is against Jis from the Dragonaut Company. The match has started. Jis asked what about that girl? He probably did a very bad thing yesterday, which is why he thought it was worth apologizing. If he hadn't intervened, he would have inadvertently killed her. It would all be over. She wouldn't have to live a miserable life, suffering because she has no talent. It's his fault that he didn't kill her. So let's hope that at least he will humbly surrender and facilitate his victory. It's not for shitty commoners like them. They're not even capable of doing anything that could harm him. So let him show him the result of his shitty labors. Rick just silently walked up to him and punched him in the face. The blow was powerful, so that Jis even flew away. Rick said that the genius also falls to his knees after being hit by commoners. And now he has to get up and get up. Because he's not going to beat up someone who looks so pathetic. Jis said that you should not relax too much after one successful hit. So after that, he immediately decided to strike back at him. However, Rick was ready for this, so he did, so Jis couldn't hit him. Blowstone said he understood. Is that what he's going to do? Angelica said that in the beginning he used brute force, but what the hell is now? Blowstone said that his technique affects the whole body it's an internal blow. Angelica asked what an internal blow is, right? Nizit said that with this technique his insides receive all the damage. And no matter how strong this draconian is, if you hit it in time, the damage will be very serious. Angelica turned to Snape and said that even though his all-powerful brother was caught off guard, why was he so calm? Snape said that there is no doubt that Rick is surprisingly strong. But this is not enough to shake the victory of Jis. Honestly, he feels so sorry for him. By the way, Rick just made his situation worse. Rick asked Jis if he was already up. Jis told him to shut up. Snape said that now they would see the scary side of Jis. He usually uses the so-called child mode, but it is worth it to become more serious when he enters combat mode. In a truly terrible situation, the absolute genius of Jis is giving his best. Jis used his unique draconian enhancement magic. This power was called Dragon Power. He told Rick that he was warning him. He has one last chance to give up. After that, he approached Rick with lightning speed. Vic managed to lock himself in and thought he was very fast. Jis hit him and Rick flew into the wall. However, the dragon was not going to stop there and used his dragon raid. This time, Rick was able to dodge the attack. Rick decided to move away from him, but Jis easily caught up with him and hit him. Angelica said Rick's feints were just perfect. It's hard to believe that Jis was able to predict all of Rick's movements, because he doesn't have much experience. How is this even possible? Snape said the answer was extremely simple. 
he easily notices Rick's every move. Angelica asked if, in his opinion, he was able to predict a future attack. Snape said that Jis could do it. He was born with a perfect body, so obviously he has extremely good reflexes. Blowstone said that a strengthening magic called Dragon Power, it uses a large amount of mana at a time. He will need time to recover his mana. He has a large supply of mana. Snape said he took it right off his tongue. That's right, he never trained his mana. He was born with her. Rick said that to think that he had just suffered so much in this life because of the small amount of mana. Just said that he seemed to care about that too. He'd rather blame his useless parents for this. After that, he used his skill called Iron Body. Rick had already gotten closer to him at that time and used his inner punch. But this time, much to his surprise, it didn't work. Just flashed behind him and hit him from there. Angelica was surprised and said that it was a cutting thread. There is also an internal blow. Snape said that they had already guessed. They guessed that Jis had not practiced these techniques before. Once he sees it, he immediately copies any techniques. He is sure that they have finally understood why he is so calm. Because the victory of Jis is guaranteed. Jis laughed out loud. He asked Rick what it was. Let him pack up and get up. He's not going to beat up someone who looks so pathetic. Everyone watched this terrible battle with horror. Everyone was very nervous and worried about Rick. Jis also continued to beat Rick without even giving him a chance to attack. Jis chuckled and said that the crowd had shut up. They must be bored watching a commoner get beaten up. Angelica was very worried about Rick. Snape said it was more than obvious. It looks like they were all wrong, isn't it? Blowstone looked at him and asked what was he talking about. Snape said it was clear, apparently they all really think he can win. Right. Let them look around. Rick doesn't stand a chance. Blowstone said that clearly, apparently, he sees everything differently. Snape asked what was he talking about. Does he really have an opinion on this situation? Blowstone suggested that he just watch and told him what about the winner. His opinion is completely inappropriate. He turned to Angelica and said that it was important how she saw the situation. Rick said he was finally out of breath because he had a lot of stamina. Just asked what was going on. Is there really not a drop of blood on him after all his punches? Rick smiled and said that this is one of the body control techniques called liquid body. This is a technique in which the impact of a blow spreads throughout the body. In general, he received almost no damage from his attacks. He also pretended to be pathetic and helpless. Just asked that and he was slowly reducing his stamina, wasn't he? He shouldn't look down on him. Was he playing on purpose? Back in the hallway, his movements were much faster. Rick said he was wrong about that, but otherwise, right. He'll do anything. By holding herself at Angelica's physical level in order to overcome him. Angelica was very surprised. Mizzet said that to think, he had just been training in order to become weaker. However, he seems to have struck his first blow in anger. Blowstone said that for Rick, winning is not the main thing in this fight. He told Angelica that he wanted to show her her potential. In fact, she can imagine that she is fighting Jis. Jis said that this was the first time some jerk had dared to defy him, the great Jis. Rick told him not to strain himself. Let him try to control how much effort he spends, okay. Jis tried to use his iron body and indestructible fist again. After that, he applied the instant step. Rick sighed and said that he was carelessly copying all the techniques he had seen. After that, he struck at Jis with his inner blow. From such a blow, Jis could not stand on his feet and fell to the ground. Rick told him that he was unlikely to figure out what to do now. And this is not surprising, because he never trained to exhaustion. Jis said that this issue could not be. The presenter said that Rick did not hit him weakly, and Jis suddenly lost his balance and fell to his knees. Snape said it was simply impossible. This can't be happening. Is Rick much more talented than his brother? Blowstone said he couldn't believe it. Mizzet said he was just an ordinary guy. Alice said she didn't understand why the old people called him that. Lynette said that he was a genius without the letter G. Angelica looked at them in surprise and said that what kind of talent did you need to have in order to please them all? Blowstone said that they can read the manifestation of a unique skill by talent. However, his unique skill can be studied. Rick has almost no mana. Even ordinary residents have more of it. Snape asked that then, how could he possibly stand up to the absolute genius Jis? Blowstone asked Angelica if at least she understood that. Angelica said yes. She herself thought that she had been going through Rick's hellish training last month. Thanks to them, she became much stronger. It's the same with Rick. No, he was much worse off. He has been training much longer than she has, and that is why his result is simply stunning. Rick told Jis that he had never trained to the point of exhaustion. Obviously, he has no idea what to do now. He also doubts that he can maintain the accuracy of his skills. Those people he despises, they've always trained despite being tired. They continued to train even when their legs were failing. 
However, after fatigue, they became stronger. That's their true strength. Just couldn't stand it and gathered his last strength. Jumped up and tried to hit Rick. However, Crick applied his inner punch and hit Jis. Jis felt a lot of pain and fell down again. The presenter said that he had fallen down again. Rick told him that he doesn't deny that he's a genius because he was born strong and he never trained. However, even so, he is still a beginner. A level 1 genius. Talent shows up only after honing. A truly gifted person is someone who was born ordinary, but was able to develop his talent and surpass others. He knows this because he has seen level 100 geniuses with his own eyes. No, not even level 1000. They are real geniuses. Someone who is not even able to defeat him, a commoner, if he fights with them, he will be blown to smithereens. He seems to consider himself the strongest in the whole world. He's gone too far. He fought only those he could defeat. But the world is very big, and he's a big lizard in this little tree. Jis said it was annoying. He's already got it. He will take back his words. He will use all his strength and tear him apart. The strongest strengthening magic of the Draconians. Dragon Recursion. Jis turned into a real dragon. Angelica said he looked like a little dragon. Snape said that they had noticed correctly. Draconians are descended from Earth Dragons. He returned to the roots and took this form. Jis used dragon power and hit Rick. Ew. Angelica watched all this carefully thinking that it was really thanks to his liquid body that he survived this damage. If she were Rick, she wouldn't be able to resist. Rick applied an instant step and an internal kick. Jis looked down from above and asked, what is the bug doing here? Rick thought that if he thought about it that way, then he wasn't using magic. His body itself is as strong as metal. Jis attacked him again, however, this time Rick was able to dodge. But still, he noticed that his punches had become much faster. Jis attacked him again and this time was able to hit him. Angelica thought she could barely see his movements. Someone, however, she is unlikely to be able to dodge. Even with all his techniques and her physical abilities, he is unable to resist Jis. Rick got to his feet and said what a blessed body. He even had a feeling that he was going to lose. Jisa called him a worm and asked if he had finally realized it. Rick said that yes, he realized it. Angelica is in his place. No matter what she does, she won't be able to beat him. The worst girl who has no chance of winning. Will he be able to fight a big guy like him? And that's why she has to sit back just because of the difference in strength, right? And that's why she won't be able to afford to give up just because of this. Even when she starts training to death. Six months. The fight between Jis and Rick continued. Rick dodged all his attacks almost with ease and said it was nine months. When the right moment came, he used his inner punch again and attacked Jis. This time, the attack was able to hit him. Jis asked what the hell. Rick said 12 months. Snape couldn't stand it and got up from his seat. He asked what the hell was going on here. He thought that he couldn't even follow their movements. Angelica was closely following their movements and the match in general. She had kept Vic's words in her head all this time and thought that he hoped that she would watch this whole match carefully. That's what it was. His movements, and that's a speed she can't match. Even without his instant step, she will become the same if she continues this hellish training for a year. Rick said that she couldn't overcome the difference in strength through simple training. She has to train purposefully. She must be crazy. She trained to death for a month, but she still lost. Winning would require another one year of training. Having come this far, which way will its outcome be decided? Angelica said it was a stupid question. She was born only for the sake of a victorious outcome. She mentally thanked Rick for this and thought that even though it would take her a year to reach this point, let him wait for that. One day he would see her power with his own eyes. Meanwhile, Jis was already exhausted and could not move at such a crazy speed as before. Rick stopped too, but looked much better than him and asked what and what he would do next. He is stronger and his only chance of victory is to fight him with the will of a dying beast. However, this will be an effort that he looks up to. If he goes for it, he will often accept his challenge. Jis said that why should a genius like him behave so insignificantly in a battle with a commoner like him? He doesn't care about training. They'll always be at the bottom anyway, and that's why they'll never stop geniuses like him. Rick told him to stop bluffing already. He is sure that his pride is hindering him, however, in his heart he has already admitted defeat. And he wants to get it over with, he's right, right. Jis shouted at him to shut up already. Then he attacked him again. Rick said it was a desperate act. As he wishes, then will he send him to sleep. The trick is to feel the flow of air and hit it flat. After that, he applied a skill called cutting thread. Jis was injured. Rick said he's really useless when it comes to this. Before controlling your power. In his place, Lynette wouldn't hold back even a millimeter and would tear him apart. Meanwhile, Jis collapsed and was no longer able to get up again. The presenter said that he couldn't fight like that anymore. Rick came up to him and told him to be glad that he had fought Angelica just now. The presenter said that Rick was the winner. 
Jis was also carried away on a stretcher. Angelica told Snape that it was incredible. Jis fell, and his plan failed, and besides, he lost too much money. She thought he would be at least a little upset. Snape said that was true, to tell the truth, he was also very surprised. It seems to him that part of him wanted to see the failure of Jis. He was a being that I provided for, denied the life he lived as a gladiator. With his victorious talent, he continued to deny his lifestyle, however, seeing him now. Yes, he lost a lot, but to be honest, it's not that bad. Anyway, it's very unfortunate that he won't be able to marry her. Angelica looked at him questioningly. She said he didn't know how to lose, and that was the end of his plan. Whatever he's trying to tell her now, she's not going to marry him anyway. Snape said no. It's not quite like that. She wasn't part of the plan. He really wanted to marry an incredible girl like her. To tell the truth, he really wants it. He was waiting for this, however, now he is ashamed. He said you were crazy, so let her forgive him. He thinks it's time for him to go. Then Snape got up and walked away. Angelica, surprised, stayed standing there and asked what, did he really like her? Blowstone got up and said that now was his way out. Seven years ago, there was confusion and chaos in the city. The man was running after the boy who stole his groceries. He was yelling at this kid to stop. Two men reached the alley. Two men came to this city. The man said that they are not so far from Herrick Utopia. However, lawlessness reigns in this place. The old man agreed with him and said it was a good place to recruit. The man asked him what the hungry wolf of the slums was, right? That's what he calls himself. After all, he's probably just as ugly as all the locals. There's no way he can become a champion. The old man said nothing would happen if they just looked at it. The two of them walked up to the building, and the old man asked that he lived here, right? The man said they would pray that he hadn't starved to death yet. They saw Kelvin there, and there were mountains of beaten people around him. The man who saw it was surprised and asked, what the hell is this? Did this guy take them all down? The old man asked him that he was a hungry wolf of the slums, right? Kelvin said yes, at least that's what they call him. And who are they? The bandits who came for his head, right? The old man said no. Kelvin seemed upset and asked if they weren't bandits. It really sucks. They look strong. The old man thought it was clear. A race of dog people. A race that is known for its unrivaled fighting prowess. However, instead they have little potential for magic. But on the other hand, he defeated all these guys with just his fists. There is not a single scratch on it. It is immediately obvious that he has the frightening aura of strong people. Obviously, he will come out of a battle against 100 people without damage. Kelvin then asked who they were. It wouldn't be bad if they turned out to be cleaners. The old man said that he was the owner of this fight hall, and he came for him. Kelvin was surprised and asked what was behind him, right? The old man said that his hands, they weren't meant for street fighting against bandits. He should go with him to Herrick Utopia. In this country, only those who defeat a superior enemy are eaten. Kelvin chuckled and said it sounded interesting. Currently, Kelvin was already fully prepared for his next fight and was about to enter the arena. A nurse ran after him, who said that the fight would begin soon. How is he feeling? Kelvin said it was the same as usual. As a champion, he will win and drive the fans crazy. That is all. The girl said she was sorry, but she knew he had both ups and downs. How does he feel about this today? Kelvin said that his condition has nothing to do with his health and mood. He only adapts to his opponent's self. He surpasses them in strength. That's why he's going to be in perfect shape today. Rick came to everyone else and said he was back. Alice said welcome back. Lynette, as always, praised him and said it was a good job. Rick said he got to the finals safely. Angelica came up to him and thanked him for everything he had done for her. Rick said she had nothing to thank him for. He pursued only his own goals in this match. Angelica smiled and said that it was good. Rick said it's already starting. The host announced that their second semi-final match was underway. Both athletes have already entered the stadium. Angelica said that the audience rejoices only from one appearance. From the appearance of their champion. His opponent is coming out right now. This is the fight that all the viewers have been waiting for for so long. She turned to Rick and asked that he probably thinks that Blowstone will win, isn't she right? Rick asked if they didn't feel anything. Something serious is coming. Someone shouted that he was rooting for the champion and only for him. Something went wrong here. The wall that was behind Kelvin's back was broken by someone. Kelvin looked questioningly in that direction. This was all done by G.I.S., who, apparently, could not yet come to terms with his loss. Everyone stared at him in surprise. Snape thought that he had lost his mind while using Dragon Recursion. The dragon's blood was released, wasn't it? In this form, his strength is simply unpredictable. G.I.S. pulled his paws up to the champion. The champion was shouted to be careful. However, Kelvin one stopped his huge paw with his hand. He said it was harder than he thought. It's not bad. 
After that, he hit Jids right in the stomach and he flew back to the podium. Kelvin said that, however, this was not enough to become the winner of the tournament. Angelica said that despite Rick's victory over him, the champion defeated him with one punch. Rick said that he felt that Jis's strength roughly matched that of a top a rank adventurer, and the champion has already stepped into the S rank. Blowstone told the champion that he looked good. He's glad. The champion said it was the first time he felt so good. The presenter said that despite the unexpected incident, the second semi-final match begins. Champion Kelvin vs. Instant Killer Blowstone The champion looked at his opponent and thought that this guy was just incredible. He stands in first place as a pivot, however, there is not a single gap in his defense. At that moment, the start of the match was announced. Kelvin thought that for a start, all he could do was attack. That's what he did. He was hitting his opponent a lot of times. However, he did not even move from his place. He easily stopped all his attacks when they reached his head. And even when Kelvin attacked him from behind, he easily stopped it all. Blastone was simply impenetrable. Kelvin laughed and said that without any doubt he was the strongest opponent he had ever had. Blowstone said it was an honor. The presenter said that everything happened in a few seconds. Even beginners can guess how high their level of defense and attack is. The whole stadium is just cheering. Angelica said that for so many seconds he attacked and then retreated. Rick said that in one, the champion threw a combo of 10 punches and 13 feints. Senpai blocked them all with his left hand. When Senpai used his right hand to defend himself from a blow, did that champion make a tackle in order to get behind Senpai? Senpai grabbed his fist as he aimed at the back of the head and threw the champion into the air, and then he waited for him to land. He struck at the right moment, but the champion sensed it with the help of his sense of smell and immediately dodged. Something like that. If it wasn't for the champion's keen sense of smell, he wouldn't have dodged. Angelica said no, because she just said she was surprised. Why should he know all this? Blowstone always intentionally takes one hit from an opponent, but now he is only defending himself. Rick said that he was most likely waiting for the right moment to counterattack. However, knowing Simpai, he most likely knows that the champion will evade anyway. Kelvin thought that if he had taken that blow, his brains would have been exposed to all the spectators. At first glance, he looks like an indestructible stronghold, but after these movements, he realized. There are five abilities they need for this competition and this guy. He's good at everything. All of its categories are very well developed. These five abilities include defense, strength, technique, decision-making, and speed. Kelvin said he hadn't moved a step since the start of the match. Was he going to give him a head start? Blowstone said he was right, but not in everything. He doesn't plan on giving him a head start in any way. Kelvin chuckled and said that since that was the case, he would make him run. The champion himself thought that he was able to block absolutely all of his punches, although no one had been able to do it before. He has to do something about his protection. After that, he approached his opponent again and struck new blows. He struck a blow called Rotating Fang. Blowstone wanted to block him, but realized in time that he would not make it, and then he simply dodged. The champion chuckled and thought that he could even dodge that. He's just a fucking monster. Angelica asked if there had just been a Rotating Fang. With this technique, he attacks the enemy countless times, beating his hand to the side. Rick said that it takes a lot of strength to throw Senpai's arm to the side. The champion prepared for the next attack and thought, what about this? Angelica said that what kind of load is it? Rick said he also attacks with regular punches, feints and rotating fangs. He mixes them together. Does she see it all? But even now, Blowstone easily repelled all his attacks and did not even budge. Kelvin smiled and thought that knowing him, he had already assumed that he would be able to successfully defend himself. Well, then let him try it. The champion hit him on the leg, however. He did not expect what would happen next and thought not. Cannot. This time, Blowstone attacked him, but the champion sensed it and managed to dodge at the last second. The champion thought it was very dangerous. He was aiming for it to open up after his attacks, however, instead he took advantage of the moment when he kicked it. Apart from the fact that he handled the endless outcomes of his chaotic strikes in the best possible way. In one instant, he realized that his blow would not cause too much damage and opened up on purpose. And besides, he has a crack in his rib, although he barely touched it. What kind of power does he have? How wrong he was when he evaluated it. Among these five characteristics, his defense and strength are outstanding. He is a very strong fighter. Despite the fact that all his characteristics are at a high level, he is not omnipotent. The old man watched all this from the side and thought that he knew that he was strong, but even so. Who is this orc? Angelica asked Rick what is it. Rick asked her if there was something about the champion's movement that bothered her. Angelica said no. She didn't notice anything specific. 
The old man thought that this time Kelvin's opponent was in a completely different league than all the ones he had fought so far. And he's still. Blowstone told the champion that he wanted to ask something. And just in case, he would ask in a voice that only he would hear. Why is he not beating at full strength? The champion stiffened and looked at him sternly. Angelica asked what they were talking about. She can't hear anything from here. The champion asked him what made him decide that. Blowstone said he thought about it while watching his other matches. He had never fought a strong opponent before. There was no motivation or adrenaline in him back then. However, is it possible to have such an ability that it is convenient to adjust to every fight, no matter which one he participates in? And when they really started fighting, he was sure of it. Even if he can naturally restrain himself in a fight with someone weaker than him, then it means that if he fights with him, something will be wrong, right? The champion said, which is understandable. This is the first time in four years that he has fought so well with someone. He's not good enough. Blowstone asked why he was holding back so much. Kelvin apologized and said that after what he had heard once, he could no longer fight seriously. Seven years ago, at that time, Kelvin had just arrived in this city and said that this was Herrick Utopia. The man asked if it was really his first time when he won everything from the slums. Kelvin said yes. He was born and raised in a slum. The old man said he left and didn't say goodbye to anyone. Is he okay? Kelvin said that he had never seen his parents, and the only greeting there was violence. The old man asked, really? Then it will be more difficult for him to get used to life here. However, first we need to do something about his hair. He stands out very much. They came to a building. The old man said it was his gym. They went inside, and the old man said that although it was small, their fighters always reached the top four in the One King tournament. Kelvin asked, where are their fighters? He really wants to check how strong they are. The old man said he was too impatient and impulsive. Great, he just wanted to see his strength. Another man was passing by, whom the old man told that he would be his partner. Kelvin asked what the rules of their tournament were. Is it forbidden to speak? The guy told him that it was forbidden to use weapons and armor. It is also forbidden to kill, and the rest is allowed. Kelvin put on his gloves and said that then this tournament was perfect for him. Don't let them think badly of him, even if he hurts him. Did Kelvin lose this match after all? The man he fought with apologized for hurting him. The guy who was standing next to the old man said that it could be said that it was natural that he could not convince the top four, however. The old man said that yes, his super feelings are a real gift. No one taught him, but he became so strong because of his talent and experience. If they polish him up, he will become an incredible athlete. Kelvin said it was the first time he lost. He had never even thought that he could lose a battle. For him, fighting is an absolute pleasure. However, there is no one left in the slums who could fight back against him. And so it became a job, time after time, to defeat the guys who came to fight him, over and over again. However, everything is different here. He lost, but he won when he trained. But then even stronger opponents appeared, and he lost again. Then he trained even harder. These were the real fights he always wanted. Besides, he always ate very well. One year ago, the host announced that this is the 107th tournament of the first king and the final match will begin soon. Kelvin was sitting in his room and preparing for the battle. He was told that this could not be. He went all the way to the finals. And it's his first time entering the main arena, isn't it? Ever since he first met him, he knew he could do it. The old man told him that his opponent had already won twice. He's obviously going to lose, so let him go there and use it as an opportunity to meet a strong opponent. Kelvin said yes, although he does not consider it obvious that he will lose. But it has already passed. During the battle, he won. Everyone was very surprised by this. The presenter said that this could not be. In his first appearance, he defeated the champion. Kelvin becomes the champion. But Kelvin himself was not very happy about this and thought that constant victory had become a regular job. After this tournament, everyone gathered to celebrate Kelvin's victory. One of those present told him that he, of course, knew that he was cool, however. Winning with one appearance in the entire history of the tournament is the first time this has happened. The hall will definitely become popular now. The old man was delighted and said that he would. The guy turned to the boss and said that, by the way, the boss is already calm, although after his victory he sobbed. The boss said he wasn't crying. The guy said he was crying. They saw it all too. Did the stubborn coach get embarrassed? His disciple had finally won. But Kelvin looked downcast. He was clearly not happy about this victory. The man asked him, what is it? He needs to relax. Kelvin said he was just tired. He himself thought that at first qualifying before winning the only thing he felt was nothing, as if it was a simple job. It was too easy to dodge his opponent's attacks as if they were being slowed down. And then he just hit them with an attack that they couldn't even see and it went on over and over again. 
It was the same boring fights as in the slums. He has reached this level in a year of training. However, he still feels that this is far from the limit. If he continues to train, Kelvin went outside and said that if he stopped training, then he would probably be able to enjoy the fights. However, he did not stop. Training, training and more training. His daily life consists of training. When he couldn't get any joy from fighting, did he get stronger and that was the only thing he could enjoy. However, most of all, he wanted to live up to his master's expectations. For taking him out of the slums, he wanted to pay him, so he focused on training. One year later, Kelvin won the tournament this time too. The presenter announced that Kelvin had won the 108 King 1 tournament. He becomes a two-time champion. However, the most incredible thing in all the matches is that he ran one stroke in no more than a minute. Kelvin wasn't happy about it. He thought it couldn't even be called a job. He wins and doesn't even think about fighting. He doesn't feel any satisfaction from it. He looked at his coach and thought that, however, as long as the gentleman was happy, it wasn't so bad. Another one year later, Kelvin continued to train just as hard. A guy came up to them and asked if he had done it again. He can't even afford a pair with a golden slime. Calvin said it was his fault, so he's going to get a mop. He left the training room and walked down the corridor. He was passing by his boss's room and heard him talking to someone. The man his boss talked to said there were few spectators at his matches recently. Kelvin decided to stop and listen to this conversation. The man said that he ends all his matches with one punch. At first, people liked it, but now it's not interesting at all. People are tired of him. If he continues his victories, the overall popularity of his tournaments will decrease. The boss said it was great, come what may. The man objected to him and said that it was not great at all. Other groups and companies are already avoiding them because they don't want to include Kelvin in the matches. If this continues, this gym will go bankrupt. The boss asked what he was offering him in this case. Does he really want him to influence Calvin? The man said no. The old man said that he wants Kelvin to become the strongest champion in history, and he doesn't care what happens to the tournament or this gym. They decided that at the time, if everything really develops, and if it all comes down to selling fights, then he'll just drop the case. Kelvin couldn't hear it anymore, so he went back to the gym. The guy asked him where had he gone, and what does he do? Where's the mop? Kelvin asked, why does the boss bet so much on him? The guy asked, what kind of questions are these? He sighed and said that okay, then he would tell instead of the master. Kelvin looked at him questioningly. The guy said that the gentleman has a reason to train fighters. The master once trained his son. They were different in appearance, but their characters were the same. He was born and raised in Heracutopia. He decided to become a fighter and dreamed of becoming a winner. He has been training all his time. He had talent, but there was one incident. He died at the age of 19 in front of the master. Kelvin would have been about one year old with him if he had survived. Since then, he has been putting much more effort into training fighters. The truth is that the master took a dream that his son could not fulfill and entrusted it to him. He thinks of him as his own son, and that's why he invested in him. Although it looks like he didn't tell him that in order not to make a fuss. Kelvin listened to him and said he understood. The next day, the presenter announced that the third match of the first round and the champion enters the arena. Kelvin thought that despite the fact that he was performing, the crowd was too quiet. What a pity. The gentleman does not want this. However, if he continues to create problems, he will give up the championship. The presenter said that the match was starting. Calvin thought, what the hell is he supposed to do? Then someone called out to him loudly. Kelvin came to his senses and managed to return in time from the blow of his opponent. He himself thought how slow it was. It would take him a second to dodge. No, it seems that he understood. He has to take this blow. After that, he succumbed to this guy and got slapped in the face. The old man was very much surprised by this. But Calvin's opponent won this round. No one expected this. The presenter said what happened. The champion fell from one blow. Kelvin continued to lie on the ground and thought that people were really excited. How long will they scream like that? He feels a little sorry for the gentleman, but it will be much better this way. He can't afford to cause trouble for them. He is no longer a drug addict who fights for his pleasure. He is a professional fighter who fights to make the audience happy. Calvin's whole story was already coming to an end, so he told Bowstone that from then on he behaved like an athlete who had ups and downs. Deliberately adapting to the matches in order to attract the crowd, he became a three-time champion. The result was not long in coming. They expanded their hall, and people were delighted with his performances. He was one in the slums and his fists only brought pain day after day. He was just an animal that was dragging out a miserable meaningless existence. However, the master accepted him like this. He gave value to his fist and made him human. This is the best way to repay him. If he stops lingering, then everyone will realize that he was only pretending.
and that's exactly why he can't fight seriously. Glowstone listened to him carefully, without interrupting him once, and said that he understood. Kelvin said he would prefer to keep deceiving people. If people found out, they would be disgusted. Glowstone revived him and said no. He puts others first, not himself. And that's what a professional should be like. Kelvin was glad to hear words of support from such a strong opponent. So he thanked him for his understanding and said that he would fight seriously only when it became necessary. And may he forgive him for that. Glowstone said it was a pity that he couldn't fight him seriously, but there was nothing he could do about it. He will respond in kind. Kelvin looked at him questioningly. Glowstone said that he would fight using only these two fingers. He hasn't moved while they're here, so they should also add this to his handicap. With this, their competitions will become much more interesting. Kelvin said it was okay. He won't tell him to stop fooling around. Fine, then they will have a normal match in which they will both hold back. And then they both went back to their match again. Kelvin, as usual, decided to attack first. He was at the blowstone in the blink of an eye and attacked it. However, he was surprised and thought that he really only repelled his attacks with two fingers. He used his spinning fist, but Blowstone also stopped his punch with two fingers. He also lifted Kelvin up with only two of these fingers, after which he threw him back down. Kelvin jumped to his feet again and thought he was trying to crush him, even when they were both holding back. It's really nice to fight against a guy like that. If he stopped pretending, how would they fight? There are so many possibilities that he would like. He won't get two more chances to fight such a strong fighter. That sucks. The boss, who had been silently watching their battle all this time and had never taken liberties during such matches, now jumped up from his seat and shouted very loudly to Kedwin that he was a moron. He shouldn't look down on him. Kelvin had never expected this turn of events. He turned to face his boss and looked at him questioningly, waiting for what he would say next. 